We do feel good today. A very good morning. Welcome to our beautiful brand new space. Welcome to the second show for Expresso for 2023. I can't believe that we are almost, well, predominantly done with January. I hope it has gotten off to a cracker for you. But if those New Year's resolutions are fast starting to catch up with you, don't worry, we've got just the advice that we need to get us back on track and get us back into the swing of things in terms of diet, in terms of sleep, in terms of exercise. We've got the whole space covered. Then of course, on the entertainment front, we are buzzing this morning. We are joined by an absolute legend. Difficult to classify him. Country, surf rock, rock, pop, muskandi, um, indie, blues. He does it all and he is amazing. In fact, he is one of the best exponents of the South African musical flavor that we have. Robin Old is in the studio today and we are buzzing. We couldn't be more proud. So you are absolutely sorted for your Tuesday morning. We'll keep you informed and of course we will keep you entertained. Uh, but let's bring you... Um, to a point now where you can connect with the rest of the team and stay connected for the next three hours. And of course, we have got too much to chew on. Let's connect with Ralph. Good morning, sunshine. Oh, yes. Put that mouth out. Let's get chewing. It's going to be an absolute magic show this morning. Zanzi, let me say good morning to you. And I'm wishing you nothing but magic. And if you've just woken up, then it's guaranteed because the next three hours we got you sorted. Now, of course, we're always chatting to you on the show, and this morning we wanted to know from you, seeing that we are officially into the swing of things, this is the second day uh, for us officially, how's your school and work prep going? I'd love for you to share your tips with us and getting uh, back into the groove of things, and of course, we'd love to hear those voice notes on 063-408-8863, and don't forget to use the hashtag Expresso Show. Now, we've got tips, we've got so much coming at you, so you definitely want to pull those ears out and listen and pay attention and maybe even join along because mm, we're going to send you into 2023 like no other. This is your year, Mzanzi, and we're going to make it so. For now, though, it's time to kick off official duties. And the man, the myth, the legend is standing by. It's Kat. <laughs> Don't know so much about the myth, Mr. DeVorne, but thank you very much. A very good morning to the team and a good morning to you as we take a look at the news headlines this morning. Now, the national news front load shedding was adjusted to phase four at five o'clock this morning. It will be valid for or from five on in the morning until four this afternoon. After that, phase five will then be introduced until the next morning. ESCOM expects 14 generating units to be switched on during the week. Meanwhile, ESCOM postponed its news conference <coughs> scheduled for yesterday afternoon at the 11th hour for an emergency meeting with President Cyril Ramaphosa. Now, the president earlier cancelled his trip to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, because of load shedding. In other news, community members in and around the south of Johannesburg have been warned to be alert after a privately owned female tiger escaped from a plot in Walkerville in the Clip River area in the weekend. Now, the tiger escaped from its cage and attacked a 39-year-old man and a dog. The Vereniging and Van der Bell Park SPCA say several authorities are searching for the animal. The SPCA says the tiger is dangerous and has requested to be contacted should anyone spot it. The number to telephone is on your screen right now. On the international news front, Egypt's government will start selling discounted bread to people not enrolled in its bread subsidy program as it battles accelerating inflation, the supply minister Ali Mosley said yesterday. Now, people will be able to buy 90 gram loaves at cost price using prepaid cards, Mosley said, or Mosley said rather. Now, he added that the price was yet to be decided, but it would be less than one Egyptian pound, which is much less than one American dollar. The point is to make this important commodity available without any exaggeration in profits by commercial bakeries, Morselli then have said. In other international news, Italy's most wanted mafia boss, Matteo Messina Denaro, has been arrested in Sicily after 30 years on the run. Now, he was detained in a private clinic in Sicily's capital of Palermo, where he was receiving treatment for colon cancer. He's alleged to be the boss of the notorious Cosa Nostra Mafia and was tried and sentenced to life in jail in absentia in 2002 for numerous murders. More than 100 members of the armed forces were involved in his arrest. Messina Denaro once boasted he could fill a cemetery with his victims. 
And last but not least, on a lighter note, pay it forward, of course, an expression for when the recipient of an act of kindness does something kind for someone else rather than just simply accepting the good deed. Now, precisely that happened last week uh, when ordinary citizens paid it forward to an organization that has supported many, many South Africans in bad times. The gift of the giver's Athlone office in Cape Town were burgled and computers and laptop equipment and all donations destined for needy communities were pilfered. However, the public quickly rallied to support gift of the givers and weed out the thugs. Anonymous calls followed and details of where the stolen items were stored were shared with the authorities. Now, the SAPS was incredible in our time of need and community members were amazing. Within minutes, they divulged accurate information that resulted in the suspects being taken into custody that alleg allegedly broke into our offices, a spokesperson for gift of the givers said. Truly wonderful news and a show of what we can achieve as a nation when we all band together. Let that be your motivation for this Tuesday morning. That's it for the news. We'll take a look again at 7 o'clock right now. Here's a first look at the headlines from the world of sports. Thank you so much, Kat. Good morning to you as well, my brother. Let's kick it off with cricket this morning. There's a new man at the helm. Cricket South Africa have announced two new men, in fact, at the helm of SA Cricket. Shukri Conrad and Rob Walter will now be coaching the national team as coaches of the country's test and limited overs teams, respectively. So Conrad, he's uh, worked with uh, many of South Africa's leading players over the years as head coach of the South African Academy since 2014. He also coached the South African under-19 side. And then Walter was the South African team's strength and conditioning coach between 2009 and 2013 before becoming head coach of the Titans franchise. Very successful there. He guided them to three titles in three seasons before moving across New Zealand back in 2016. So great to have him back here. Then uh, speaking of cricketing news, South Africa claimed their first win of the women's under-19 T20 World Cup. That was after beating Scotland by 44 runs in their second group stage match. So batting first, the tournament hosts posted 112 for seven in their 20 overs. Kayla Reinecke, the standout batter with 53. And a piece of history was made with the ball as leg spinner Madison Lansman took the competition's first ever hat-trick to finish with figures of four for just 16. Incredible. South Africa are second in their group and they will play the UAE in their final group game and that's tomorrow. Now on to football news, uh, but keeping it local still, Mamanodi Sundowns, they continue their dominance of South Africans uh, top flight football recording. A 1-0 win in the Twane Derby up against Supersport United to record now their 11th consecutive win in the league. Neil Mayama's uh, first half strike proving the difference in an evenly matched clash as the Brazilians took another step towards a sixth successive title. And they opened up now a 14-point lead over second-placed Richards Bay. And we move on to tennis. Uh, lots to get excited about at this early stage of the year, um, especially now after yesterday. South African tennis star Lloyd Harris scored an upset win in the Australian Open first round yesterday when he eliminated Italian 17 seed Lorenzo Musetti. So Harris won a thrilling five-set encounter, 6-4, 6-1, 6-7, 2-6, 7-6, in only three hours and 48 minutes. Incredible. Your next player, Hungary's world number 78, ranked Martin Fuskovic. And then, of course, making it through Rafa Nadal, Stefanos Tsitsipas, and Daniel Medvedev, all going through to the next round as well. Then on the women's side of the draw, top seed uh, Iga Swiatek. She made pretty heavy work of her opening match, uh, eventually beating Jules Niemeyer, 6-4 uh, and 7-5. Then uh, Emma Raducanu, uh, Coco Gauff, and Jessa, Jessica Pagula also through to the second round there. Star-studded opener to the year's tennis account. But that's where we leave our sport round. We'll touch on those headlines again at 7. Brand new day. Hopefully the weather has something good in store for you. Let's find out from Rao. Thank you so much, G. Of course, it's time to take a look at the weather this morning and reporting on weather news. Several measures are being taken in rebuilding massive pipelines, supplying the Etiquani Metro with water to make it more resilient against flooding. Now, this, after two of the pipelines from Nagel Dam to the Durban Heights water treatment plant, were smashed by huge boulders or washed away in last year's floods. Now, extensive damage to infrastructure of both the Etiquani municipality and bulk water supplier Umgeni Water left many parts of the metro without water. Now, Mgeni Water alone sustained damage of some 900 million rand. And water and Sanitation Minister Senzo Mkunu says repairs to one of the pipelines were finished at the end of last year, and the second pipeline should be in operation by June. 
Now, meanwhile, a refurbished 340 million liter reservoir at the Durban Heights water treatment plant has also come into operation to supply water to high-lying areas to the north of Durban, such as Kwamushu, Inanda, Ntuzuma, and parts of Phoenix. Of course, it's that time of the morning where we take a look at those sunrise views. Then first up, we've got Mark Bosman, all the way out in George, who sent in this absolutely magical view from his bedroom window before getting ready for work. Now, that's how you get inspired for the day. Absolutely love it, Mark. Next up, we've got Sandy from Durban, enjoying a morning stroll on the beach, watching the sunrise glimmer up the sky, and glimmering it does. And I hope it did that for the rest of your day, too. Wendy came through next and sent this shot of a yellow sky from her garden whilst enjoying a yummy cup of coffee and what a yummy view to add to it and then Clive Lambert also all the way out in Durban showcased this pretty view of the sky from his home and that's what I'm talking about a little piece of art right there to start the day last up for this morning though we have Dudley Cork all the way out at Woodridge Island always sharing absolutely phenomenal images of the Sun blazing over the water from his doorstep well played, well played. And Zanzi, thank you so much for sending those absolute magic shots in. We love seeing how you start your day. And of course, bring it on. Keep it coming through this morning on 063-408-8863. For now, though, let's take a look at the temperatures across the country. We're starting off in Polokwane. The day starts at 17, moving up to a high of 28 degrees. Mombela sees the day starting at 19, up to 28. Pretoria, 18 is your low, up to 31. And Johannesburg, 16 is your low, up to a nice warm 30 degrees Celsius. Moving over to Makikeng now, the day starting at a minimum of 19 up to 34. Clarkstorp very similar, 18 up to 34. Kimberley, 21 up to a scorcher at 37 degrees. And Bloemfontein continuing with the heat from 15 all the way up to 35 degrees Celsius. Moving over now the, around to the coast in Richards Bay, sees the day starting at 23 up to 35 degrees. Peter Maritzburg, the heat continues from 18 up to 35. Durban sees the day starting at 23 up to a high of 31 degrees. And Mtata, another scorcher from 20 all the way up to 37 degrees Celsius. Moving around now to East London and uh, 25 is yellow up to a high of 30 degrees. Craddock sees the day starting at 18 up to a nice warm 37 degrees. GQ, about Sees the day starting at 23 up to a high of 27, and George 19 is low up to a high of 26 degrees. Cape Town sees a sunny sky all the way through from 19 to 29 degrees. Worcester 22 is low up to a high of 39. Sutherland always being in the heat from 18 all the way up to 35 degrees, and some potential thunder and rain on your side of the world. But obviously, Uppington taking the cake once again, it's gonna be hot. 26 is your low, up to a maximum of 41 degrees Celsius. Make sure you stay hydrated, slap on some sunscreen and put a hat on because, oh, it's going to be a scorcher. And much like the rest of the show this morning, let's catch up with the team and see what they're up to. <laughs> Yeah, I like that, Mr. Devorde. Warm temperatures all around the country. So I guess it's very appropriate that we turn up the heat in your closet as you prepare to head back to the office. We want to update your essential wardrobe classics for that practical and presentable look. It's our first hashtag Tuesday of the year. And of course, as always, I need your help to help me choose between these two looks that, of course, are from Woolworth. So here's the first one to my immediate left, which is this grid check slim fit blue suit styled with a plain white T-shirt and these black derby shoes that I'm wearing. That's that's option number one. Then option number two over there to my far left is the pair of black trousers styled with a gray stretch uh, suit jacket and a mustard golfer also styled with the black derby shoes. So your job is very simple. Uh, the choice is yours. You need to head over to our Expresso social media pages and vote for your favorite back to work look. And when you do, don't forget to include that hashtag styled by Woolies. Will it be option one or option two?
Awesome, Zanzi. Welcome back. Your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Of course, we're getting you set for the year. And January is a time for New Year's resolutions. And one of the most common New Year's resolutions is to eat better and exercise more. I know all of you are wanting some of that in your life. So in the, that spirit, we are joined this morning by dietitian Clara McLoonan, as well as athlete and gym owner Seb Prentice. So you can share how you are improving your lifestyle this year by coming through and sharing your voice notes at 063-408-8863. But for now, though, We've got the specialist on the couch. So let me say good morning to the both of you. How are we doing this morning? Good, thanks. Good. Do you have a health? Yes. Yeah, we're all good. <laughs> I, was, I hope good. so. <laughs> all right, so thank you so much for joining us this morning. Clara, maybe I can just uh, hit it straight to you. Obviously, we're starting the year off. It's a brand new sort of slate for many. We have this mental desire to target our goals and some of that being our diet, right? So is this a good time to take on like a quick challenge and like spruce ourselves up? Or are you looking at something more along the lines of longevity and sustainability? What's your idea? Yeah, so what I first just want to touch base on is the word diet. Diet yeah. can often have quite a negative connotation to it mm. and also quite short term. So we rather want to rephrase it and reword it to being a healthy lifestyle. It's got a much like more that. positive connotation to it. And it's also, as you said, for longevity. Yeah. So how do we incorporate this? We need to look at a person as an individual because what works for you does definitely not work for myself or for Sebastian. Yeah, of course. So, you know, you need to look at what is your work life, what is your routine at home, and specifically focusing on that word routine. When you want to incorporate changes into your lifestyle, you need to have a routine. Um, and for healthy food choices, that is maybe going to the grocery, the grocery shop um, once a week and yeah. you know making sure that your fridge is stocked with the nutritionally beneficial food and produce so that you can feel kept and have tools to make the proper choices. Yeah, and, and not have, have, obviously put yourself under the strain of thinking every single day, what am I going to eat for lunch, yeah. for supper, for my snacks? It's all kind of sorted so your mental capacity is freed up at the same time, right? Exactly. And I just want to say that those food choices must be delicious. There's nothing worse yes. than opening up the fridge and being just bland crackers. Yeah, diets yeah. don't have to be boring, <laughs> right? It doesn't no, have to be that boring no, thing. No. I, I love that and I think that's a great way to start, a great thing to find a, kind of like find your love within that balance at the same time. Exactly. Seb, obviously the man when it comes to movement, the specialist, but I know for many, obviously the festive is set in, a lot of people are kind of getting a little bit lethargic and lacking that motivation to really get started and like mm -hmm. ramp up the year. How would you say is a great idea to find that motivation, to find a reason as to why should I move this year? Why should I get into a form of practice when it comes to using my body for something? So it is difficult and motivation is fleeting. It's not around all the time. Yeah. So I personally, I don't think it's the best tool to leverage when you're trying to get started. Yeah. Um, and I do go on about this quite a lot, but I, I think the best thing to do as opposed to looking for motivation is to just start off with something small and achievable and use that to build momentum okay. and build sustainable, as Clara was saying, you know, it's make it, make it something sustainable, something that you can do um, in perpetuity, you know? Um, and that's just by making it small and something that you can do regularly and that you can start to develop some confidence in yourself and oh, I can do this, I can do this over and over and yeah. then maybe after some time, incrementally making a little bit more and increasing it over time. So don't just go off and sprint, learn how to walk first and then jog and then sprint and appreciate Precisely, that process, yeah. right? And the journey on top of that. Now, we were speaking about healthy diets earlier, Clara. I want to kind of define that term because it's, it's quite loose, it's quite broad. What is a healthy diet at the end of the day? Because we have all these fads about, let's go keto, let's intermittent fast, let's like cut out car. Like, what is healthy these days? Because it's such a broad term, I feel. I think if we can just simplify to three main cornerstones. You want to emphasize whole foods, so you okay. want to emphasize eating fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains and low fat dairy. So not as processed, right? Yes, okay. yeah. You want to include your lean protein, so that being your um, chicken breasts, fish, nuts and seeds, as well as eggs and legumes, so that yeah. is your beans and peas, lentils, and you want to eliminate um, and limit as much as possible all the delicious things unfortunately so <laughs> anything that contains saturated fat so that's yeah. um things from your um, animal products and also trans fats that's all your baked and fried foods right. but there are some good fats out there right like we can still eat fat correct yes yeah, so those are your plant fats known yeah. as your mono or your polyunsaturated okay. fats which you'll find in things like your avocado and your nuts and seeds all right so Zanzi, you can breathe don't worry 
you can have some fat as long as it's the good kind. <laughs> now, look, I think there's so much that I, a, a lot of us are going through in terms of these journeys, and it's something that I want to touch base on in a little bit. And of course, for you, Mzanzi, we have an opportunity, and we have two more discussions where we're going to be diving deep into how to kickstart your journey in terms of fitness and, of course, your diet too. So, if you have any voice notes that you'd like to send through, then use that number. It's 063-408-8860, and of course, the specialists are here to serve. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Well, here's an opportunity for you to play daily and win big with Vodacom this summer and get your share of 500 million rand in what? cash and rewards. Say it again. Yes, please. 500 million <laughs> rand. Oh, man. Cash and rewards. In cash. We love it. We absolutely love it. So let's talk about some of the cool things that are going on in this space. We want you to unlock your summer with Vodacom and get free airtime. Free airtime, absolutely mm -hmm. no. Simply download Vodapay, and when you purchase a summer bundle, you get free airtime back saved in your summer wallet that can be used to purchase more bundles if you want and also take um, the opportunity of some amazing deals on Voda Pay, and it's just for you. Yeah, very importantly though, you can also get two times the amount of free airtime back mm. when you use Voda Pay instead of USSD. And another exciting addition to this year's summer fun, three months of free YouTube data allocated to Vodacom customers on any red package. Three months free data. I love that. So customers can use this data obviously in a very fun way to connect socially through YouTube Shorts, which has taken off, I think, over the last year. Yeah. 15 to 60 second videos created using a smartphone and then YouTube's built-in creation tools, which are pretty cool, and then uploaded directly to YouTube from the YouTube app. Hashtag, hashtag unlock your summer in shorts with us <laughs> this year by participating. And we don't mean like real shorts. Well, you can do it in shorts if you want. Um, but we'd ideally like to see you in the various YouTube short challenges. And you also stand to win even more amazing prizes through yeah. that. Have you actually tried I mean, YouTube shorts? Have I you? haven't, man. I actually uploaded a video. It's, 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 it's pretty simple. And like, you know, people always are like, how do I become a content creator? Yeah. And that kind of thing. YouTube shorts makes it very, very easy. As, as quickly as you would, let's say, record something on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, like, very quick. Like reels. And it's, exactly. And often it makes you look like you're a really good video editor. You've got a fantastic ear, you know, just the right songs <laughs> to choose. These tools are there to help you. And then, of course, the algorithm then kind of associates your video with like-minded videos as well. So you find people, like, scrolling through hours and hours of shorts, 15 seconds at a time. It's really addictive. It's, it's really called the vortex. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks you in. <laughs> now, remember that one lucky viewer stands the chance to win superbless vouchers to the value of 400 rand. Simply oh. reply to the competition post on the Expresso Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram page and tell us how you will be unlocking your summer with Vodapay. Mm, and of course, don't forget to include that hashtag unlock your summer in your answer. This week's competition closes at midday tomorrow, so you don't have a huge amount of time. Get on it. That's the 18th of January. But as always, you can find the terms and conditions on expressoshow.com. Good luck. Please do it in, in shorts. shorts. <laughs> <laughs>
It's my feel good breakfast show. Yes, welcome back from Zanzi, your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Of course, we're carrying on a pertinent and important conversation to kickstart your year. And we've got dietitian Clara McLoonan, as well as athlete and gym owner, Seb Prentice. And they're still with us this morning and chatting about diet and exercise, some of the essential pillars when it comes to moving forward and slaying this year. Now, eating a healthy diet and exercising often can help control or delay health issues associated with aging, like high blood pressure and diabetes. So again, we're asking you, Mzanzi, to share some of your tips on how you are improving your lifestyle this year and you can come to and use that whatsapp voice note line it's 063 408 of course guys we had a great discussion just establishing importance of what is a diet but let me ask you this clara uh, what exactly is the point of eating healthy i mean some people are fine they're okay uh is there any benefit to including like that healthier aspect to your diet yeah, so the first thing that usually changes when you start to incorporate a healthier lifestyle or healthier food choices, and remember I mentioned to emphasize whole foods yes. and whole fruits yes. and vegetables. Now they contain vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Okay. So the first thing that happens is your gut will start to change. Um, that what I mean by that is that you become less constipated, so your gut becomes more regular. Okay. And when you become less constipated, you become a lot less fatigued, so you gain a lot more energy. Oh, we could all do with some of that. Exactly, yeah. especially <laughs> in the beginning of the year. Okay. And um, when you start to include a diet that is high in fiber, so your fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, fiber actually feeds your gut microbiome, so your beneficial bacteria, oh. and your gut microbiome starts to produce serotonin and dopamine, which is your happy and your feel-good hormone. Hormones. So you literally are feeling better just by doing this, right? Exactly, okay. exactly. So then your um, metabolism starts to tick along a lot better in a mm. more regular, um, in a regular motion. And also, when you're including vitamins and minerals into your diet, you are boosting your immune system. So you're also going to become a lot less sick. Okay. Yeah. All right. So by incorporating a healthier lifestyle and healthier food choices, as you said, you're also wanting to prevent getting disease of the lifestyle either now or later on in your life. And that is your diabetes, your hypertension, um, yeah. Okay, like well, that. I think this conversation is done. That's all I needed to know. <laughs> we definitely have to eat healthy. <laughs> now, like, look, there's so much obviously to dive into more, and especially when it comes to also the movement, right? The diet is as important as moving because they kind of, in a sense, almost work hand in hand, right? So, so obviously, again, like we were chatting earlier, a lot of people are trying to meet the year with this enthusiasm and trying to reach those goals and the, those magazine covers that they're trying to replicate for themselves. How much exercise though is enough and what's too much maybe? Because I know you can get caught up in that instant gratification identity of like, I want this now mm. and try push 150% for it. Is that always a good idea? So definitely not always a good idea to try and overexert yourself too yeah. quickly. And with, just like with nutrition, movement and exercise is very subjective and it really depends on the individual. It depends mm. how active you already are, depends what your lifestyle looks like, what your uh, pre-existing conditions or injuries look like. Yeah. So there are a number of things to take into consideration, but as a general rule of thumb, I think that it's a good idea to try and get a little bit of deliberate, intentional movement every day. Mm. Whether that's going and walking for five, 10 minutes, just moving your body, being outside, that's gonna benefit you a lot in terms of your mental well-being and just getting your body um, working a little bit more effi um, efficiently. Exercise and movement's really good for your metabolic efficiency, mm. your body actually utilizing the, the food and the nutrition well. Um, and yeah, so it, it, it depends, it, it really depends, but I think a little bit of uh, intentional movement every day is a good idea. And as I said, if you can scale that up over time incrementally, um, that's, you, you're, you're winning and you're doing well. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be in the gym or you don't have to be running or doing something very intense. It's just moving your body um, as much as you can. I love how you define that because a lot of people think movement is that intense thing. And I mean, even something as simple as like, go shopping in the mall. Mm. Count the amount of steps that you actually did when you yes. go shopping. That's like a little basic form of like active recovery and cardio in a weird way. Mm. <laughs> so I mean, movement comes in many forms and I love how you're establishing that because that is so important. Find something you love, right? And then you can move continuously. Clara, anything that we should maybe avoid when it comes to dieting, especially the dieting crazes that we see right now and some of the fads, are there any things that we should really just stay away from and kind of stay clear from? Because it's just, I don't know, either just too overwhelming or it's actually not that good for us. So, as you just said, it's a fad diet, yeah. and we want to stay away from anything that is a fad diet. Again, it has got a negative connotation towards it, 
having diet in it, and it's also a very short-term um, thing. So anything that really eliminates major food groups, such as your macronutrients, so those diets that say you don't eat carbohydrates, mm. you don't eat fats, or you only eat one type of macronutrient, those are the things that I would recommend to stay away from. You know, I always say, or most often I say to my patients, you really are what you eat. Literally, what you consume and put in your mouth yeah. is what your body is comprised of. So just, yeah. So Seb's clearly been eating a lot of protein. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so we've got one more conversation to have about this, and we're gonna dive into more about movement practices, help you prevent some injuries, and also we're gonna actually show you a practical example of how you can move. So don't forget to send us a voice note of how you're moving, how you're improving, and how you are delivering anything that you are wanting when it comes to excellence with your body and your diet. Use that voice note line, it's 063-408-8863. <laughs> so while we focus on fitness and our diet, let's share some uh, more recipe ideas that align with your New Year's resolutions and hopefully get you extra, extra motivated for the year. It's bring the family, 100%. Your cousin's coming over, get the crush and I'll get the ice. More crush marks, 100% refreshing, 100% goodness. Made with love by Clover. Yeah, get the whole family around, and whether your family needs 100% goodness of fruit as a kickstart for the day, or 100% tasty juice for those school lunch boxes, or 100% refreshing juice to enjoy at home, there is a crush that will give you a reason to unlock your 100%. And it's a great way to get your daily dose of vitamins. And here's a quick and easy roast butternut and apple salad recipe that'll inspire your journey in health this year. And like, we walked into the kitchen this morning, and we're like, this is the healthiest thing we've seen all year. It really is. All year. This whole year <laughs> we've been searching for a healthy meal like this. Now, this is absolutely beautiful. Uh, yeah, we, we eat based on the perception of color. We know that our eyes start to literally absorb nutrients based on the colors that they see. We eat with our eyes first. So there are a lot of colors here. Absolutely. It's healthy. Fresh ingredients. It's really easy. We're going to be crushing on this salad. Let's go. Let's go. Get okay, it. so the most important part, the hero here, is obviously our butternut. I suppose you could use another pumpkin, but butternut mm -hmm. is just so beautiful because it lends itself to that kind of sweet and salty vibe. Right. Um, a bit of cinnamon vibes going in there. Last year, I think the real hero of every dish, if you had to look for one common thread, garlic powder. I think featured oh. in just about everything, maybe even an ice cream at some point. It's like a new um, thing for me. I usually, thing, yeah, yeah, I'm usually fresh garlic or uh, crushed, pre-crushed garlic, mm. but garlic powder. I've yeah, started roasting my own garlic in the air fryer. Roast Whoa. your tomatoes, roast your garlic, roast a bit of onion, blend it up, tomato sauce for uh, pasta. Boom. Wow. For the kids and the kids love That is okay. intense. Um, a little bit of Cinnamon, cinnamon going in. Mm -hmm. uh, you nearly just like took a oh, I know. <laughs> that could have been devastating for this time of the morning. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, I think you can probably actually add a bit of the whole. That, yeah, right, yeah. Come you're on. Gonna, you're gonna top it around come a little on. bit. Come well. on. And, and a little bit more of this. Yes, um, and then, buddy, you don't have a huge amount of work to do. No, what no, I no. need you to do is slice up that apple. Um, and then we're gonna kind of compile everything together. But this butternut, obviously it goes a beautiful buttery, almost sweet kind of flavor profile. It caramelizes beautifully in yeah. the oven. Um, so that's how we're gonna activate these flavors. We're gonna pop it on a baking tray, because it will stick. Mm -hmm. And we are gonna pop it into the oven. I wouldn't make your pieces, your slices too thick or chunky. Bear in mind, people need You mean to your pieces of butternut? Your pieces of butternut, yeah, because okay. you don't want them to um, be too cumbersome or difficult to eat. Um, remember, it's being eaten as part of a salad. It's not like the main dish. Um, but you do need it to stand out. I was trying to, a new way of slicing up the apple to kind of get the... How's it going for you? <laughs> <laughs> terrible. How's this patented new technique? There we go. Um, as there easy we go. as that, then these little babies get popped into an oven 180 degrees for about 20 25 minutes what you want to see is that caramelization basically yeah. you want to make sure that you've cooked it through it gets nice and soft and mushy and the sugars caramelize with all the beautiful flavors of the cinnamon and the nutmeg um, so you're going to have a bit of sweetness but you're also going to have a bit of umami and that says to me that we need to balance it out so when we and start, what do you balance that out um, we're going to layer it out obviously you've got the beautiful texture of the apple which is nice and sweet and crunchy crunchy um, we've got the rocket which is quite peppery and really fresh so the rocket's going to form the base uh, your that was close this is this is quite an artistic technique you're it is i'm, I'm trying to get it those is. beautiful flat pieces that they've got over there and i'm not exactly i didn't observe but no but you the you're prep. following the brief and that's to keep you know it manageable I mean? and not too big and cumbersome i absolutely love that so we're going to start with uh, our apples a bottom layer of our rocket to give yep. that beautiful herbaceous punch then we've got some nice um sweet 
uh, red onions, then we've got the pop of our red peppers, fresh, beautiful, crunchy. We've got mixed nuts to up the protein, mm -hmm. add some really healthy fats, and then to finish it off with a bit more herbaceousness, herbaceousness. Um, we've got some chopped parsley. And there, I think yep. you've literally ticked every box. Look at that. Great as a it's main. A presentation now. Can handle as a side, perfect, buddy. Might, you might have taken the long way around, but it's beautiful. <laughs> the end result is so, so worth it. Absolutely spectacular. While you do that, let me make the, <laughs> the You're gonna dressing. going to make us a little dressing here. So we've got some mustard over here. Beautiful. That we're going to mix along with some honey, some white wine vinegar. Ooh. And then we'll add a quarter cup of our hero ingredient, which is our Clover Crush orange juice this morning. Oh, I love that. Like that the orange and the, the kind of cinnamon and butternut flavor combo. Perfect, perfect little balance there. There we go. The amount of ingredients, ingredients, are we making individual little salads for the whole crew? Is that what's <laughs> going on here? I feel, like, I feel like we've been led down a path. Here um, we go. Oh, this is gonna be beautiful. So fresh. Beautiful. There we go. Now, of course, without a doubt, you'll get 100% tasty, refreshing goodness in every sip from Crush and a good dose of vitamins A, C, and E as well. And the best way to enjoy any meal is simply with a refreshing Crush to add a dose of goodness to your day as well. So I'm going to mm. sprinkle this dressing. Thank That's you. Oh, looks man. Lovely, Look at man. you, man. Looks absolutely beautiful. Stunning. Get that dressing on and we can finish it off with a few more herbs. And we are winning at life. This looks beautiful. And there's a lot going on here. If you want a salad to be a main, this is how you yeah. level up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, how's the smell of that dressing? Get in. There we go. Oh, C'est superbe. C'est superbe. Right. Oh, look at that. Ta -da! Beautiful stuff. Let's put that back there. Absolutely wonderful. Well done, buddy. Great start to the day. And this is for the chefs. Dare I say, <laughs> we crushed it. <laughs> mm, <okay. laughs> Stop, and I really attribute a lot of that. It's my feel good, worth it. 
Zanzi, welcome back to Feel Good Breakfast Show. And you're carrying on with the last round of this epic conversation and wrapping up everything with regards to diet and exercise. And we're still chilling with dietitian Clara McLoonan, as well as the athlete and owner of a gym. Yes, it's Seb Prentice in the building. Now, not only are these effective in preventing excess weight gain or in maintaining weight loss, but healthier lifestyles are also associated with improved sleep and mood. So again, we asked you to share some of those voice notes, and we've already got a couple of them coming through. Let's see what this first one is. I think it's from Anonymous. Let's see what they have to say. improve my lifestyle this year? I make sure I wake up early in the morning. I drink water first, even though I can't afford some uh, healthy food, but I make sure I, I, I go to gym uh, four to three times a day. I gym twice a day. And um, because of I'm, I'm, I'm unemployed for now, but I make sure that I keep my life um, healthy. I drink a lot of water. I, 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 I buy fruits sometimes. Yeah, that's how I keep my, 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 my lifestyle uh, healthy this year. Man's ticking the boxes there. I don't know if you have anything to critique, but he wakes up early, he gets some water and fluid in, which is quite important. And it seems like he's working out and moving quite a bit. I don't know if you meant three to four times a week or a day, <laughs> but I definitely think it was a week. Any advice on that? It sounds like he's pretty much got it covered, right? Yeah, and he's doing great. Yeah. Seb, your side? Movements? Yeah, it sounds like there, there's good intention there. And if it's three to four times a day, that is a lot. <laughs> um, but there are people who do it, and it works yeah. for them. And if, you know, I wouldn't uh, encourage everyone does it, but if that's your what you want to do, then... I like it. Kudos to yeah. you, brother. Looks like your year's off to a full swing. We've got another voice note coming through. Let's hear what this one is about. Good morning, Expresso. This is Bianca. Hi, Bianca. Some people say that intermittent fasting is really good for you, and oh. some say that it's actually not that good. What is your take on intermittent fasting? Oh, -ho. <laughs> this is a very debatable <laughs> one. I've seen so many comments for and against it. It depends on your situation. I personally do intermittent fast. I'm a male that uh, focuses on my macro balance and is really ensuring that I get all my nutrition in at the same time. But I know that that's not always a ben beneficial thing for everybody. I know with women, there's a hormonal change that can occur if we do it too aggressively. What's your take on it, if yeah. you have any opinion? Because I know everyone's going to be like holding a gun to you, like, <laughs> whatever you say is the law now. Like, but exactly. What <laughs> you say? Um, look, I think what's important to just focus on is that everybody, like I said in the beginning, everybody's an individual. Yeah. And what works for you maybe does not work for myself or for Seb. Um, so that's something that really, you know, we would have to look at as a as an individual. Um, intermittent fasting definitely does have its place in this world. It also does not have its place mm. in this world. And it's important to know if you are doing it, how to do it correctly, mm. and do it correctly to have the support of a professional such as a dietitian yeah. to help you, you know, cross over those lines and achieve your um, goals that you want to. I just say on the intermittent fasting note, and something I've noticed a lot is people pick up the fad and think it's a great opportunity to lose weight, uh, gain spiritual awakening. But one thing I find to be a common downfall is that people will often intermittent fast in the morning, have a training session at eight in the morning, six in the morning, and not fuel afterwards. And literally for the next four hours, they're still fasting until lunchtime gone completely catabolic. I don't know what else they're doing to the body. So a downfall that I potentially see from intermittent fasting is not timing that sort of movement yeah. correctly and refueling straight after a workout, which I think doesn't really have a benefit, right? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. And then what happens is, is you become hypoglycemic, so your blood sugar levels drop into a dangerous um, yeah. zone. And what happens then is your body's almost like in a fight and flight state. So it needs sugar right now. It needs yes. to refuel itself right now. And what do we do? We're not going to go and offer a delicious balanced salad or meal. <laughs> yeah. We're going to run and find a delicious muffin, you know, and that, that we can you know, stop. Yeah. And that's because your body needs sugar right mm. now in mm. order to. I want to say survive. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, interesting stuff indeed. Definitely do your research and consult a dietitian like Sarah here because it's something that you definitely want to get involved in. Seb, maybe I can ask you just before anybody does enter into this journey, and of course, we are going to be taking people through a little bit of movement later, but some, something that I find to happen quite often is injury prevention. Mm. Well, injuries happen often, and I'm looking at trying to prevent that. How do we stay away from hurting ourselves in this process of trying to grow? I think the, that's a great question, a very important question as well. I think uh, a big one is listen to your body. So your body will often tell you uh, with pain or discomfort before you actually injure yourself that something is not quite right. And you should just ease back when you are feeling that. And um, also for a lot of people who haven't been training for a long time, it could be difficult to intuitively 
understand mm. that message from the body. So b a basic things like I said, and I, I've said it before now, is to incrementally increase, start small and increase over time. Yeah. You know, learn to walk before you can run. Um, and to warm up, and also to warm up uh, correctly. So try and not do static stretches like holding. Yes. Do more dynamic, dynamic movements before to get the blood flowing and get the joints lubricated and the muscles warm and things yeah. like that. Um, because stretching can actually uh, uh, often cause more harm than good before a workout. Mm. You know, you want to be actually moving your body. Um, so warm up and listen to your body. Oh. Taking down notes, taking down notes. The year is officially sorted of Zanzi. If you were listening to any of these conversations, then you're definitely one step ahead. And Sarah, I can't thank you enough. Sorry, Clara, I can't thank you enough for joining us this morning. Seb, of course, it's always been a wealth of knowledge coming from you from the movement side of things. But I think when it comes to diet, we definitely have ticked that box and one step yeah. further to attacking and slaying our goals this year. So again, thank you all for being a part of this conversation. Zanzi, don't go anywhere. More to come. And of course, Seb and I are going to get changed and getting into that movement. And you can join us with that one. We'll see you there. And of course, you're not alone out there. On the topic of health, we've got an army behind us. Let's turn our attention to our healthcare professionals. We know that pharmacists are not only brave, they also inspire hope within their communities. We've seen it over the last few years here in South Africa. They've become that cornerstone of so many communities that have lost so much, and these pharmacies kept on fighting. And that's why we celebrate the Pharmacy of the Week, a feature that acknowledges our incredible pharmacists. And this is our way to say thank you to these brave healthcare workers, proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, the sponsors of Brave. So let's take a look at this week's Hero Pharmacy of the Week, Tuscany Pharmacy out in Rustenburg. Our pharmacies are on the front line of healthcare. This is Pharmacy of the Week. Coexisting to help each other, right? You're serving the community to ensure that they are healthy. You're serving the community to ensure that their healthcare needs are met. Uh, in turn, you're staying in business and you form relationships. And those relationships last on forever and there's an establishment of trust. And uh, in that respect, once you trust each other, you know you, you're going to get the best advice at your local community pharmacy and you want to maintain that trust and build that trust. So your, your, your individual self-care, you, you need to ensure that the person needs to be well, he needs to have adequate nutrition, he needs to live a good lifestyle, he needs to look after himself or herself. And in that respect, a pharmacist can help advise an individual how to do that basic hygiene, basic eating tips, basic information to be able to ensure that, that, that you can continue living and can continue looking after yourself. And in that respect, we have excellent companies that help us with the initiative. Take, for example, Adcock Ingram's OTC initiative, the sponsors of three. Uh, reps are available at any time, and that was, that was brilliant. Pharmacy of the Week. Proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram, OTC, sponsors of Brave. Inspiring communities, one pharmacy at a time. Good times is what life is all about. But sometimes heartburn, indigestion, acid reflux and UTIs can really put a dampener on our days. This summer, make sure you have citrus soda as your good health companion, relieving you of all heartburn, indigestion, and UTI symptoms. Let's get back to feeling good. Citrus soda brought to you by Adcock Ingram OTC, sponsors of Brave. Ah, to the amazing team at the Tuscany Pharmacy. I want my turn to say I love you so much. Tuscany Pharmacy, keep doing what you're doing. And if you live in Rustenburg, go and give them a big hug from us. And uh, that was, of course, proudly brought to you by Adcock Ingram, the sponsors of Brave. Uh, thank you so much. And of course, as promised, we are getting into the thing that we call a movement. Yes, January is the month for change and new beginnings. And for me, it's about self-improvement and setting myself up to achieve the goals I've set for the year ahead. So I'm sharing some of my favorite get active exercises. And this is something that both myself and Seb have been talking about. And he's also added some of his favorites into this one as well. So we're going to take you through a demo and also chat about the importance of exercise and movement for our overall well-being. And plus, I'm going to ask this man if he's got any tips just to help us stay active. And on top of that, discuss the importance of staying hydrated when exercising, exercising, moving, doing anything that is fun like we discussed earlier. And of course, Seb, 
the man is here to do the things, brother. So uh, I believe that you uh, have a little bit of a niggle when it comes to the knee. Just a little one, yeah. Okay, so we're going to be watching that. But I think that's a great thing to mention for anybody else starting out here. Exactly. A lot of us do have imperfect bodies. We have imbalances. Yes. We have niggles and injuries. So I think, like you were mentioning earlier, it's great to take things slow. To take right? things slow and to try and work around things. So, you know, do whatever is pain-free. If it's hurting, adapt the movement, do something else. But we're going to show you that even if you do have a little bit of a source of something, you can... You can make a plan around that. A little sore something. So don't worry, we got you covered. You're in safe hands over here. So essentially, Seb and I were chatting about how's the most, what's the most effective way to get a workout in with the minimal amount of movement, but really target the entire body, all right? So we put the first uh, few exercises together and we thought, hey, this is something we can also, also have fun with. We can create a flow out of this as well. So pay attention as we do the following. We're gonna start off with something nice and easy, nice and simple. We're gonna start with a high plank, work out the core at the same time, as well as stabilizers of the shoulders. It's a really simple movement. We're essentially stacking our weight or having our shoulders stacked right above our hands so you don't be too far forward or too uh, far leaning back and you don't want to have your glutes sticking outwards nice neutral spine and we're holding this position now if you want to step it up a little bit what you can do is try get the outside knee so let's say your right knee to touch the right elbow so essentially bringing it together you will force that contraction of the obliques and the abs and then exactly the same thing on the other side nice and simple and you can stand up straight after that essentially it's a movement that you can hold for about 30 seconds or you can incorporate it into a flow like we're going to show you right now. So if you want to bring us that, that next exercise, we're going to work on so, a squat or a lunge. So the next exercise is a reverse lunge. Nice. So you're just really engaging the core, yeah. dropping back into it. You're going to feel it in your glutes and your hamstrings. This is a really nice movement, body weight movement, and it's the whole lower body. Yeah. Um, and like I said as well, you're engaging your core because there's a lot of balance involved. Um, so it's a great it's a great exercise to do with minimal equipment. It is, man, and a lot of the time I think this is an exercise that you can incorporate just on its own. If you do about three sets of this between, let's say, eight to 12 reps, you're really getting great stimulation, like Seb said, on all those parts of the body. Man, apart from working out like this, it's also important to hydrate, right? Precisely, yeah. What's, what's your reason in terms of hydrating when we exercise? I know for me it's obviously about regulating your body temperature, which helps, yes. and that cools you down, but there's more than that, right? Yes, I mean, you're losing water a lot of the time when you're sweating when you're working out and obviously it's a vital part of your nutrition as we were speaking about earlier in the yeah. show so it's important to replace that water that you lose um, and also if you can to have some kind of electrolyte because that's also a part of hydration so your magnesium and your sodium um, but it's just a base it's it's to help support the basic functions of the, of the body yeah. which you, you know you're losing water as you train so just to replace that replenish those stores and to keep you feeling good throughout the workout yeah and I'm already feeling those stores really right now I'm really getting my sweat on but I must just say something that Seb and I are wearing Seb's got the shorts and I see in the shoes I've got the full gear on and I'm wearing Woolies Athleisure wear and it's something so exceptional because it's got moisture management fabric to keep me cool and dry right so all of that fluid that I'm losing is actually being used to cool me down and with these items I can unlock the motivator in me and obviously get everybody hyped up and excited because when you look good you feel good too right come on <laughs> now, Seb, one last exercise we're going to do for this one obviously the squat it's a great exercise but it's something that's often not practiced properly so again i have a neutral spine a lot of people have cues about knees not going over the toes it's not so much of an issue as long as you're practicing good form right precisely and i think the main thing is to just make sure that when you're squatting that your knees are in line with your toes that they're pointing in the same direction ah. a lot of the time you know knees over toes slightly uh, more bent forward yeah. that that's contingent on the dimensions of your body. So if you have longer femurs, people are going to tend to lean more forward. Oh, okay. So we often don't have so much control over that, but as long as you're focused, you're present, you're engaging your core, you're making sure that your knees are going, as I said, in the same direction as your toes, yeah. you should be fine. Absolutely brilliant. All right, so we're going to just show you quickly how you can put all three of these moves together, incorporate it as both sets, working out models, or just getting the fat burning. All right, so what you want to do is essentially start off with a lunge. So essentially, you go for the right leg reverse lunge, and then the other side for another reverse lunge, straight into that squat that we just discussed, and then going into the high plank straight after that. You can do a step down version, or you can jump back like Seb, touching those elbows with the legs and then going back to the restart and into your reverse lunge position. I gotta say, this is something that's gonna get your sweat on and just in time for this, Woolies have these great cans of natural spring water. Let me get one for you there, brother. I love how that's these right. look, they are absolutely exceptional. Still water from Drakensberg. It's a natural spring water. It's convenient while you work out and on the go. I mean, it honestly fits so nicely into like a cup holder, in my pocket even, a lunchbox, you name it. And on top of this, the natural spring water is canned at source for refreshing, let me tell you, natural taste. And it's been influenced by the delicate balance of pH and mineral content.
What do you think, brother? Refreshing? Delicious. <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs> right, now's the time to work on yourself, set your goals, and exercise. And remember to stay hydrated. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Feel good Welcome back, you beauties. We have raced through the first hour, two hours still to save us, so let's kick him off and bring you up to speed with the day's major headlines, then I'll touch on the sport. The time now just before 7 o'clock and a time to take a look at the news headlines on this Tuesday morning. On the national news front, Langa, the oldest township in the Western Cape, is gearing up to celebrate its centenary this year. It was established in 1923 following forced removals from District 6 and later from nearby Ndabeni. Now the township was named after Tosa chief Langa Libalele, who was imprisoned on Robben Island for two years in 1873 for rebelling against the Natal government. Langa, with its rich history and heritage, is situated along the N2 highway, some 13 kilometers from Cape Town's CBD. And celebrations of its centenary will start off in April. Meanwhile, load shedding was adjusted to phase four at five o'clock this morning. It will be valid from five in the morning to four in the afternoon. After that, phase five will be introduced until the next morning. ESCOM expects 14 generating units to be switched on again during this week. Meanwhile, ESCOM postponed its news conference scheduled for yesterday afternoon at the 11th hour for an emergency meeting with President Cyril Ramaphosa. Now, the president earlier canceled his trip to the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland because of load shedding. On the international news front this morning, a London Metropolitan Police armed officer who used his role to put fear into his victims has admitted dozens of rape and sexual offences against 12 women. Now, David Carrick, who is 48 years old, who met some victims through dating websites, pleaded guilty to 49 offences across two decades. Now, the Met has apologized after it emerged that he had come to the attention of the police over nine incidents, including rape allegations between 2000 and 2021. A senior officer said his offenses were unprecedented in British policing. Carrick admitted 24 counts of rape. 
In other news, Egypt's government will start selling discounted bread to people not enrolled in its bread subsidy program as it battles ex uh, accelerating inflation, the supply minister Ali Mosseli said yesterday. People will be able to buy 90 gram loaves at cost price using prepaid cards, Mosseli said. He added that the price was yet to be decided, but it would be less than one Egyptian pound, which is much less than one American dollar. The point is to make this important commodity available without any exaggeration in profits by commercial bakeries, Mosseli said. And finally, grand-scale musical theatre productions are returning to South African stages in February, the first time in three years in the wake of the COVID-19 health crisis. Now, one of the most exciting announcements so far is the return of the large-scale version of what is said to be the world's most successful rock and roll musical, Buddy, the Buddy Holly story. Now, it will be on stage between March and May this year. The first of three big musicals, Calling Us Home, opens in the mother city in mid-February with a South African and American cast. Now, after its local run in, South Afri in the South African production, it is said then to embark on an international tour. An earlier COVID-19 casualty, We Will Rock You, with a stellar local cast, debuts in Johannesburg in early March, and the show featuring the music of the legendary band Queen then premieres in Cape Town in early May. So make sure that you do book your tickets to check out all of these amazing productions that are making their return to the stage. That's it for the news at 7. We'll take another look at 8 o'clock right now. Here's another look at the world of sports. Just got to tip my hat quickly to Craig Urbani. I saw his legendary face a few times there. The original Buddy Holly, who I think put South African musical theatre on the map. We tip our hats to you, brother. Likewise, to the two new men at the helm of SA Cricket, or at least our top team. So Cricket South Africa have announced that Shukri Conrad and Rob Walter are the new coaches of the country's Test and Limited Overs teams, respectively. So let's start with Conrad, who has worked with many of the South African uh, leading players as head coach of the South African Academy since 2014. He's been their starting point, in fact. He's also coached the South African Under-19 team. Then Walter was the South African team's strength and conditioning coach between 2009 and 2013 before becoming the head coach of the Titans franchise, where he was incredibly successful, guiding them to three titles in three seasons before moving abroad to New Zealand back in 2016. So good luck to both men and their um, very, very pressurized new jobs, but we cannot wait to see the outcome. Then uh, speaking of cricket, we've got one of those positive outcomes to report back on. South Africa claimed their first win of the women's under-19 T20 World Cup after beating Scotland by 44 runs in their second group stage match. So batting first, the tournament hosts posted 112 for seven in their 20 overs. Kayla Reineke, the standout batter with 53, then a piece of history was made with the ball as leg spinner Madison Lansman took the competition's first first ever hat trick to finish with incredible figures of four for 16. So as a result, South Africa are now second in their group and they'll play the UAE in their final group game tomorrow. And on to local football, Mamalili Sundowns have continued their dominance of South African top flight football and don't look to be slowing down, recording a 1-0 win in the Trinet Derby against Supersport United to now record their 11th consecutive win in the league. It was Neo Miami's first half strike that proved the difference. In a pretty evenly matched affair, these brilliant uh, Brazilians took another step towards a sixth successive title as they opened up now a 14 and seemingly unassailable lead over second placed Richards Bay. And plenty to get excited about on the tennis front with the year's first Grand Slam serving us up the South African tennis ace Lloyd Harris scored an upset win in the Australian Open first round yesterday when he elim eliminated Italian 17th seed Lorenzo Musetti. So Harris won a thrilling five set encounter 6-4, 6-1, 6-7, 2-6. 676 in three hours and 48 minutes. He had to show a lot of heart. And he'll now next play Hungary's world number 78 ranked Martin Fuskovic. And then also going through Rafa Nadal, Stefanos Tsitsipas, and Daniel Medvedev all on to the next round. Then on the women's side of the draw, it was top seed Iga Swiatek who made heavy work of her opening match, eventually beating out Jules Niemeyer, 6-4 and 7-5. Then Emma Raducanu, Coco Gaff, and Jessica Pagula joining her in the second round, showing the incredible young talent in world tennis at the moment. But that's where we leave our sport for now. We'll touch on those headlines again at around 8 o'clock. As you head off to work, let's get you there safely. Ryan's got the latest on the roads.
Thank you so much, G. Yes, it's time to take a look at the roads and the traffic this morning and starting off at Edendale in KZN. Now, there are roadworks on the N3 going towards Peter Maritzburg and the left lane is closed, so please do drive carefully if you are in the area. Now, next up for those in the Johannesburg area and Midrand to be specific, there are roadworks on the R21 northbound after Olifant's Fontaine Road. So both left lanes are closed, so again, please do approach with caution and, of course, for anybody heading out on the roads, buckle up, stay safe and plan accordingly. For now, though, it's time to head from the roads to the sky and see what's happening in the latest when it comes to weather. Uh, reporting on weather news first up and something that is quite exciting indeed. Now this morning we bring you an item of amazing news from space. A bright green comet is set to swing by Earth's outer space for and maybe around for a month. Now NASA officials said the icy vid visitors was first uh, spotted in March 2022 while it was inside the orbit of Jupiter. Now it could be seen through binoculars as a small green glow to those in the northern hemisphere and it will be closest to Earth on the 2nd of Feb, this being said by scientists. Now they also added a quote saying comets are notoriously unpredictable but if this one continues its current trend in brightness it'll be easy to spot. Now this being said on its blog from NASA earlier this month. Now the icy celestial body made its closest approach to the sun on the 12th of Jan and on the 2nd of February, it will be just about 42 million kilometers away from Earth. And this being said by the planetary society themselves. Mm, exciting stuff indeed. But for now though, it's time to ramp up the excitement even more and take a look at those sunrise views sent in from you. Now for our 7 a.m. update, we have Arusha Singh who shared this balcony all the way out in Centurion like a beautiful pastel painting. I love it. Next up, Cordell Hammond all the way out and uh, well, he's out in Centurion and he shared this uh, bold shot. Orange hues glimmering up in the sky and another painting like picture indeed. Next up, we've got Pat Sunkel out in KZN snapping a lovely view of the wispy clouds. And it looks like it's going to be an absolutely wonderful day. Now, last up, we have this magical video sent in from Chloe Miller out in Bloberg. And this one is of a kite server having fun in the water, looking like they're jumping over the sun, embracing the stunning sunrise colors. Come on, that is just incredible. <laughs> Look at him go. I love it. Thank you so much for sending that through and keep sharing these beautiful images and videos. It's 063-408-8863. For now, though, let's take a look at the temperatures once again across the country and starting off in Polokwane, thunder on your side of the world. 17 is your low, moving up to a high of 28 degrees. Mobella sees the day starting at 19, up to 28 degrees. Pretoria sees the day starting at 18, up to 31. And Johannesburg, 16 is your low, up to a high of 30 degrees Celsius. Over in Mahi King, the day starting at 19, up to 34 degrees, Clarksdorp, 18 up to 34, Kimberley is Scorcher, 21 up to 37 degrees, and Bloemfontein, 15 is your low, up to a high of 35 degrees Celsius. Over in Richards Bay along the coast now, 23 is your low, up to a high of 35, Peter Maritzburg, 18 all the way up to 35 degrees, Durban, 23 degrees up to a high of 31, and Mtata bringing the heat, 20 all the way up to 37 degrees Celsius. Continuing around the coast now, moving over to East London, the day starting at 25, moving up to a high of 30 degrees, Craddock sees the day starting at 18 up to 37. Berghas is today starting at 23 up to 27 degrees and George 19 is low up to a high of 26 degrees Celsius. Over in the mother city in Cape Town 19 is low up to a high of 29 degrees. Worcester 22 up to a scorch at 39. Sutherland 18 all the way up to 35 degrees and of course Uppington taking the cake a scorcher indeed 26 all the way up to 41 degrees Celsius. My word, slap on that sunscreen, put on a hat, and enjoy summer because it is here, Mzanzi. And speaking of heat, check this out. Yeah, we certainly are bringing the heat right now in the studio with our guest artist. Now from LA noir style anthems to nostalgic surf themes, today's featured artist Robin Ald has proven his stylistic prowess and originality. Now in his latest album, The Ever-Loving Wind, his admiration for Joni Mitchell and Steely Dan is evident, mixed in with his own unique ability to create songs that feel like a life's journey. Let's take a quick listen to some of his beautiful musical talents. Freezing hands to 
And let's give a big feel-good welcome to Robin Old on your feel-good breakfast show. Celebrate. Unite. Great to have you here with us. Nice to be here. Nice oh, to be here again. Tunes. What a way to start the morning, eh? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is what you were keeping yourself busy with, Robin, while we were all kind of going through the, you know, the, the winter months and uh, kind of cocooning ourselves. And you were working on a brand new album, The Ever Love and Wind. Indeed. Which we have a beautiful uh, kind of physical copy of. And I said yeah. to you earlier on, I'm quite surprised that you actually, <laughs> you have a physical CD. Well, it is um, a bit weird having a CD. I was talking to my good friend, Valiant Swart, the other day. Yeah. Saying, you know, we try and sell CDs at gigs. What we should actually do is just say, we've got eight CD players in the boot of our car. And if you want to buy one, you get a CD free. You know, that's going <laughs> But people still, still do use them. So, and they you've got to have them, do. you know. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's a beautiful kind of uh, keepsake, if you will. Um, but let's talk about the album. Um, as I said, the tune actually absolutely sounds amazing that we're hearing right now. What was going through your mind in terms of musical inspiration at the time when you were putting it together? Well, um, I did try, I've been, had two sort of albums. The one was a collection of very slow stoner surf songs, <laughs> of which this is one. In fact, that's the fastest one on the <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, and then there was a whole bunch of chirpy kind of more pop uh, you know, uh, up-tempo stuff. Yeah. So I sort of just put them together and thought, I, I usually like to have a bunch of up-tempo stuff and, and have do four or five before you do a slowy. Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, let me just put it all together and see what happens. And uh, people have been responding very well to both. They seem to be sitting quite happily next to each other. Yeah. Yeah. I'm quite interested in finding out a bit more about the title, The Ever Love and Wind. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like it's something that's... Uh, you know, sort of sustaining, consistent, and that if you if you let uh, if you let uh, yourself go a wee bit and don't worry about stuff too much, then you'll come out all right, I suppose. Yeah. Um, well, actually, it comes from a, there's a Native American who's got the saying that goes, at times I uh, go about with great pity for myself and feel very sorry for myself, and then I realise a great wind was carrying me across the sky. Hmm. Which I thought was lovely. The ever loving wind, yeah. that constant throughout life that keeps you going when things are not yeah yeah I'm also interested in finding out about your kind of ability to stretch across different genres of music because usually when you know people ask you so what, what what genre is your music they they expect a singular answer you know it's either rock or it's pop or it's this yeah. but you you stretch across multiple genres and it, um, in that way you're expressing yourself in, in multiple ways right yes well it's um, I'm quite fortunate in that I'm a singer songwriter when people say what genre do you do you say well I use folk and African and blues and Muscandi and you know all sorts of styles yeah but um, if I just say I'm a singer-songwriter, then I sort of take the, the Beatles' position that anything is fair game. Yeah. If I want to make a bluegrass banjo song, that's just fine. You, if, if you're a singer-songwriter, you can nick anything. Yeah. That's, that's the way I look at it. What inspires you most as a singer-songwriter when you are putting pen to paper, putting fingers to guitar for a melody? What inspires you? Um, well, I mean, I used to say, I get asked a lot, do you get inspired when you're sitting out the back surfing? And it's like, no, usually it's like three hours in an empty hotel room before sound check somewhere. That, really? That, that, that's, that's inspiring. <laughs> empty hotel room, that's inspiring. But no one might think that that time is actually <laughs> super boring and it's grinding your brain to a halt, but yeah, you when, when you're forced, Yeah, when you're forced to write, because also I live in a very busy household. Mm. So, you know, when I was making albums years ago, um, you know, I'd, I'd say, okay, I've got 30 songs, I've got to get it down to 12. Now, I've, I had to say, I've got, 50 ideas lying around and not one song. So I actually had to get out of the house and I wrote a lot of stuff in Bathurst. I had a gig up there and I took four or five days. It was just me and the, the monkeys and the butterflies. Beautiful. And um, well, I thought I'm going to write, I'm just going to pump it out. Wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine as well as you, as you described like the you know, the highs and lows in terms of tempo and frequency how the monkeys and the butterflies might have inspired <laughs> that. Pretty cool. With 2023 ahead of you, um, what are you looking forward to? What, what's on the cards? Well, I'm looking forward to playing the songs because um, it's, you know, I think the last time we, we had the chat was, was, it was about 2014, huh? mm. but it was back of the line. Yeah. So it's been, I've been slacking. I've been doing stuff for other people, but I'm, I'm looking forward to getting the new songs to people and they seem to be enjoying it. So I've got tours coming up. I'm doing uh, Eastern Cape. Uh, in February, um, doing Cape to Cuba this Sunday, a whole bunch of dates, which you can find on my on my socials. Yeah. Uh, Dibur, we're doing on the 18th of March. Um, so I'm going to be working it hard up and down the, uh, the coast, and then I'll, I'll gather up my courage and see if I can go to the hinterland. 
Uh, but at this point in time, I'm just sticking to the coast. Sounding really, really good. Great to have you with us again and okay. looking forward to the music. Make sure that you do stay tuned for music from Robin Old right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show coming up. It's a sport we can all win at by unlocking with Vodafone. Like Rajesh, getting 70% off his shopping. Or Tabang, posting YouTube shorts for 31 Saturdays. Hi, I'm such a champ right now. And Norm, sir, unlocking data and airtime. Chomam. This summer, we are not just players, we are all champions. Unlock your summer with Vodafone and get your share of 500 million rendi cash and rewards. Vodacom. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Yes, Mzanji, welcome back. Your feel-good breakfast show. What a show it has been already. Getting us geared up for the year and getting someone else geared up. Because earlier on the show, Kat asked you to help him choose between two back-to-work looks for the show. So let's have a look at some of the comments. Of course, option one was this grid check slim fit suit style with the plain white tee and, of course, the black derby shoes. And then we had option two, which was a pair of black trousers styled with a gray stretch suit jacket and a mustard golfer. Well, let's see what Mzanzi has to say. Of course, the comments have been coming in thick and fast. Melody Mostert says, good morning, Expresso team. I think Cap will look good in number two. Hashtag style by Woolies. I like that. Rumor Governor also says, option two, something different. As I've seen Cat with a blue suit, he would totally rock this new look. All right, new year, new you, cat. That's what the people have to say. Caroline Moses, option two. Simple as that. No explanation needed, and much the same for Naomi Sylvester. Option two, although cat will look good in both, 
but two is my option. He looks good in anything, let's be honest, but looks like the people have spoken. It looks like we have a winner, and I definitely think if I was to have a vote, I would agree with you, Mzanzi. So let's see if we have a winner. We do indeed. The man himself. Oh, dang, look Mr. at Demonio. you. Hello, First sir. day back at the office. Great to see you. Hope Welcome. You a fantastic festive season. Oh, it's been fantastic. Looking forward to hitting all those KPIs and really delivering on behalf of the company within this financial year. <laughs> you can see the presentation is looking amazing, and uh, we're going to really be... Uh, <laughs> profits, can you see profits skyrocketing yeah, all year long? Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Dude, you look like someone that has everything together. All your boxes right? are ticked, and I feel like, like I need to step it up when I'm around you. That's the look that There's like a young GLE or an Aston Martin parked up. Oh, yeah, you know I, I, mean? I, I can uh, smell it on that's you. That's that. <laughs> 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 well played. You definitely made yeah, this well done, look guys. good. Do you like it? It's feeling amazing. And I like the fact that, you know, with this, you can have the, the formal look with the jacket on. Maybe you're getting out for lunch. Yeah, lunch yeah, yeah, just take, take it off. Jacket. Yeah, man. You go. And also, it seems like you've got a, a, a nice new body to don with this. What's happened to you this morning? I've holiday? got a what? Man's been working out this holiday, yeah? You know, Bringing out them the clothes. money, when the December was Decembering, <laughs> we were out here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love them, Sanji. Thank you so much. You made it move. You made this man look good. And Willie's <laughs> easy stretch suit. That is obviously what this man is wearing. It'll take you wherever you need to go this January and beyond, clearly. So shop this look and more at Woolworths in store online and of course on the app. That's Check it profits, out. Profits, profits, skyrocketing. <laughs> <You love it. laughs> so here's the bottom line. You want to dress like that one day? You gotta go to school. Jokes aside, <laughs> it's time for the tire to hit the rubber. Tomorrow, yes, we are back to school. This might strike mm. fear into the hearts of many, but it's such an exciting time. The year in begins. Are you or the year begins? Are you ready for the next phase? The question applies to parents, to educational psychologists, to mm -hmm. kids as well. So we thought we'd bring one of our own in. Educational psychologist and good friend of the show, Dr. Sharon Aitken, joins us to help get us prepared mm -hmm. if we aren't already. But hopefully we are almost there. We just need the, the few little <laughs> touches. Uh, Doc, great to have you here. Happy Thank New Year. Thank you. And to you. Um, it's still early enough, I think, to say that. An exciting time and a lot mm. of anxiety attached to this and I know this uh, from a parent's perspective one of my mine is about to start a their joy. schooling journey they're going to grade R at a wonderful oh, new school but it is terrifying for us I think he is mm -hmm. just so excited to see his friends and kind of connect to new social circles but we have been desperately trying to settle on a system mm -hmm. that works so we mm -hmm. can simplify mm -hmm. so how do we go about doing that what is a good home system look like? I'm guessing it's not one size fits all, but no, how do we start? No, no. So I think for me, it's really important to emphasize that parents are really crucial to the well-being of their kids at school and they're uh, helping them to achieve their full potential. And it is a parent's responsibility to make sure that their child is well managed from grade R sure. all the way up to university. Now, parents are going to be going like, are you mad? University, they should be self-sufficient by then. But I want to put it to you this way. I do not know of a single working adult who is not supervised. Mm. Or just I think of yourself if you went to varsity, think of yourself in varsity. Exactly. First yeah, let's varsity. just do that exercise. Yeah. So parents need to, there's two things that I, 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 I think are the most important I need to share today. Parents need to organize their kids at home. They need to make sure that they organize and they need to supervise homework on a daily basis. Mm. They need to make sure that it is done. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So with the organization, so as you said, by now, you actually need to have made sure your kid is prepared for the year. You've got to have had that stationery and everything sorted. If you've left it till the last minute, you're sending a message to your child that it's actually okay to leave everything till the last minute when it comes to school. So those are like really... The system is a learning opportunity in itself. Exactly. Okay. So you're building resilience, you're building skills, you're building strategies. Okay. Exactly, yeah. That. So get, make sure you, as a parent, you're ready ahead of time. And then when it comes to systems, um, you want to make sure that you've helped the child plan for a daily basis. Obviously in grade R, you're gonna do most of that. But by the time they're in a foundation phase and then on, on the higher sort of grades, you're gonna have lists on the wall that the child knows that they have to pack to get ready for the next day, you know, and then you're gonna supervise that that's actually done. Now, some of the schools, the teachers are going to say to you, you can back off 
they must be able to do it themselves. But in actual fact, many of the children can't. They need to be taught or guided. They have process. to yeah. be taught, guided, and supervised. So that's that's that organizational side of things is really important, and part of that is communication with the school. Yeah, so if yeah. you're wanting to simplify, as you said earlier, and really know what is important, you have to attend your parent-teacher meetings. You need to be in contact with your school. Many schools have um, parents who coordinate for mm, the classroom. And there's WhatsApp groups. And there's WhatsApp groups. And yeah. you need to be on those things. For and sure. just make sure that, because it is your responsibility. Why is it so important? Because I'm, I'm, the real take home for me here is it's not too late. You don't hand them over to the school no. or hand them over. No. And yes, it's great to have a little bit of extra time while they're actually away, but you, you're on the same team. Yes. Um, and ultimately, if you kind of keep dropping that ball or just leaving it to the grand design, when it comes time for you to be answerable, you're not going to have all of the facts and yeah. you're not going to be able to support yourself. Exactly. Child. And one of the areas that parents miss the ball totally is on homework. So mm. I see parents are amazing with homework from grade one until grade three because the teachers are very precise about what needs to be done. From grade four onwards, and particularly in high school and at varsity, parents are like, eh, you're yes. old enough. They're not old enough. Teachers gotcha. Yeah. They're not old enough. So parents need to be making sure that they have the right environment to do their homework in, that they know what time of day. So we don't want a grade one doing homework at, at, at mm. 7 o'clock at night and, and an adolescent working at 10 o'clock at night because they're not getting a good night's sleep. So environment is really important. Parents need to check the homework is being done. If you don't check it... Uh, <laughs> does everybody remember adolescence? I was well, that's the thing I was going to say. You just made me terrified because I think my math levels are at about the same level as my grade R son. Um, but I love the fact that we're a team and we're in it together. Yes. Um, and that being said, I think um, within a family, it's great to establish who's the doer, who's the teacher. Get those roles down. For instance, my wife is amazing at teaching. You see what my son can do with his name now and simple mm. little things like that. She's nailed there is a role for everybody, but you're all in the same team, so stay on it. I've got a couple of critical questions to ask, especially about timing and those really critical years. We'll get into that on the other side. Defeat your mucus monster, Mucophys. Loosen mucus and phlegm for clearer airways. Brought to you by Pharma Dynamics.
Welcome back. Hopefully you're filled with excitement and just a little bit of nerves because it kind of keeps you real and keeps you honest. We are continuing our discussion on getting prepped for the new academic year and getting some tips on how not to fall behind from our good friend and educational psychologist, Dr. Sharon Aitken. So let's jump straight into it. Uh, some really interesting factors come to bear in this space. And I know we could sit and talk for hours about this and I would recommend someone connect directly with you if they've got a more nuanced problem to deal with. But I mentioned earlier, as you were talking about certain gateways that are vital, it kind of struck me that they, and from all of the experts that we've spoken to, there are a few years that carry a bit more weight. Yes. Grade one, obviously, four, eight, 12, and then first year stands to reason. Yeah. Why are these gateways so important? So just briefly, grade one is the start of the formal year of their formal schooling. So the expectation is that they're going to be able to sit at the desk for a much longer period than would have happened in grade R. Okay. So parents need to monitor that. And they are starting to learn to read, which will be a vital, and write, mm. that's gonna be a vital skill that they're going to need in the later grades. So that is a really, it, parents need to monitor grade one. They need to be very closely connected with their teacher. That's when some of the early the first Foundation. learning barriers mm -hmm. also are identified, such as dyslexia. Sure. So we can identify that as early as grade one and start intervention. So grade one, yeah, the, the start of formal schooling, it's quite a lot more pressurized. Grade four is a problem because what's happening is they are swapping subjects. Now they've gone from learning to read to reading to learn. So if your child in grade three wasn't really doing so well with Absorbing the reading, the yes, yeah, now yeah, in yeah. grade four we've got a problem. Plus, with multiple subjects, the children become very stressed at how to manage and learn those subjects. And okay. some schools start exams in grade four, which adds to a great deal of pressure for a grade four learner. So you've got to watch that. Um, then in grade eight, they move from a more contained environment where they have a, often a lot more interaction with their teachers to a totally new environment where they are don't have a relationship as much with those teachers. Possibly bigger mm. classes. And yeah. we have adolescents. Mm -hmm. And adolescents, early adolescents, social emotional development, they are not interested in school, they're interested in their peers and having fun. So if you are not on the ball as a parent, you're in big trouble because the next thing they're not doing so well in math yeah. or they're not so doing so well in Afrikaans because they haven't done their homework for two years by the end of grade and, and nine. And not every kid can get that hockey or rugby bursary. So no. <laughs> yeah, you, you. <laughs> and even with those nowadays, you yeah, still you need to marks. Deliver. Yeah, you've got to have marks. Grade 12, I'm seeing it become increasingly pressurized. So we've got to watch the levels of anxiety sure, because the, the, yeah, there's okay. a huge burnout. And then when we get to first year tertiary, the failure rate is insane because the change of environment, the lectures are even more distant mm. now. They're not really interested. They don't yeah. monitor the, the, the students. First year is first year, yeah. really. First year varsity, I think the statistic now, and has been for many years, is a 66% failure rate. And that is simply because they don't attend lectures and things. Now, so if parents have their finger on the pulse, and they're making sure they're attending lectures and they're doing the work that needs to be done, then it's not so dangerous. But if you don't, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, money, money, money. It's, it's not a year you want your kids to fail. I, I would add to that, and thank you so much. As, as someone whose child is starting that journey tomorrow, I, I feel a lot more um, at peace. But I would also suggest, in my experience, working with kids trying to bridge that gap from school to their calling in life, it's the why of it. And mm. often why they drop out is because the why isn't aligned with the degree. So maybe you can start that conversation with your little one before they go into gray R and talk to them every day to find out where they act. So hopefully that wasn't too much to digest. Most importantly, enjoy it. Cry a little bit as they head off to school if it's a first day, um, but just enjoy them embarking on this incredible academic journey that's going to potentialize them. It's going to be the first step towards their beautiful future. Now though, let's have a little bit of fun. 
amazing as it is to be back at school learning and hanging out with friends, it can be a little stressful getting back into the swing of things, especially after a festive holiday. But not to worry, simply dedicating some time every day to creativity and some mental stimulation can do wonders for stress levels. Luckily, the Crazy Store has all the crafts and the back to school supplies that you need to make sure that your school year kicks off on the right way. For our first craft, let's make some paper rainbow rain clouds. Now this craft is beautiful curly paper rain clouds with rainbow droplets. Now before getting started, make sure you have the following. White paper, colored paper, a ruler, scissors, and glue. Start off by grabbing some white paper and cutting out two centimeters by 10 centimeter paper strips. Then you will grab your colorful paper and repeat this process, but then also cut those in half for the droplets. That is two centimeters by five centimeters. The more white strips you have, the bigger your clouds will be. But for now, I'm only using seven strips for mine. The color of the droplets is also completely up to you. Once you have all your strips laid out, you can use a pencil to make your strips curly. Simply wrap the strip tightly around the pencil and repeat the process to see your curly clouds come together. The more you unroll and stretch your curls, the bigger your cloud will be. Cutting and folding paper in these simple yet creative ways can be such a great way to switch off for a bit and just get your mind off things. It is more therapeutic than you think and let yourself get lost in the craft. Now you can simply glue all these curly pieces together and watch your cloud come together. With this craft, a little bit of glue goes a long way. For the raindrops, simply glue the short edges together. Assemble and admire your new three-dimensional paper sculpture. I'm a little sentimental, so I tend to hold on to my crafts for a little longer than I probably should. But this one is definitely worth it. You can stick it onto a canvas or hang it on your wall while, of course, using some very lightweight supplies. For our next craft, how does a Play-Doh octopus sound? Now, Play-Doh is an all-time favorite for me. It is so relaxing to play with, but also so rewarding to make things with. Today, we will be making an adorable little octopus. Now, you can use any color you want. You will need your Play-Doh, any skewers or pencils for details, and a plastic knife. Start by cutting eight clay strips together. These strips can be any size you want and as long as they are all the same size. Step two, now that you have all the tentacles, lay them all out and connect them as a star shape. After they are all laid out and connected, curl the ends upwards to give a little bit of flair and really bring your octopus to life. Step three, now it's time for the body. This part is super easy. All you have to do is roll out an oval shape and place it onto where the tentacles are all connected. This is the best part. It's all about the detail. When making the face for your octopus, forget everything that you know about sea creatures anatomy and make this craft yours by adding your own unique spin to it. By using any tools you might have around the house, such as a skewer, a straw, or a pencil, you can add some detail to the bottom of the tentacles. And for our last craft, how does some paint pouring sound? Now, before jumping into your craft, make sure that you have a big open surface to work on and to lay out all of your supplies. To get started, you will need a few simple supplies. Eight plastic cups or glass jars, three plastic spoons, three different color acrylic paints, water to mix your paint with, a few paint brushes, and a tray if you have one. In three separate cups, you will mix equal parts water and acrylic paint. But if you're gonna be using white paint, you will need twice as much paint. You can pick any color you want. Once all your colors have been mixed, grab your empty cups and place them face down onto the tray. This will elevate your canvas and make the pouring process easier and will also make for a much cleaner finish. Then let the pouring begin. With this part, there are no rules. Just gently pour your paint mixture over the canvas and watch the magic happen. Watching the colorful paint swirl is so mesmerizing. 
Another cool technique you can try is swirling around the paint yourself with the end of a paintbrush or even using a pencil for a marbling effect. Remember to give the paint at least a whole day to fully dry before decorating your space with your new artwork. Not only are these crafts therapeutic, but make for some stunning decor as well. Make crafting a part of your 2023 resolutions and remain calm and relaxed while being creative in the new year. And if you're looking for some soothing craft supplies, head on over to the Crazy Store and shop their endless array of paints, canvases, brushes, pens, Play-Dohs, and all your back-to-school essentials. Big or small, we have got it all. Everyone will find something at the Crazy Store. It's no wonder South Africa considers the Crazy Store the crazy fun place to shop. I can make my day. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back, you beauties. Hopefully, you are feeling as inspired about this brand new year and its possibilities as we are. And when it comes to those New Year's resolutions, we've seen it play out for the 10 years that I've been on this show. <laughs> Consistency. Con pretty in every area of life, consistency is key, but in this specifically, and we've all seen it, staying motivated with our new daily planners is a big thing. But losing steam and, you know, come Feb, mid yeah, February, that's it's normally where it, it, it hits. <laughs> not this year, baby, not this year. So whether you want to work on your fitness, maybe organizing and decluttering your home, or simply just prioritizing self-care, Game has got you covered, and they're going to help you start the year strong, and yes, consistently, yes, my friend. Now, I know we've been putting a lot of tips together on the show, so I thought let's just uh, carry on with that mm. and talk about like our goals, what we want to achieve this year. I know you've been speaking about getting that body back, and already, man, you're looking so good, G. Are Stop you going to carry on with that this year? Stop it. <laughs> um, well, it's been a journey, man. It really has been a journey on the most fundamental level, and, and the pain management has been a part of rediscovering my body and how to utilize it properly, and you've got to put in what it needs. Mm. Uh, the three Ps, protein, protein, and protein. <laughs> You've got to get it. I've discovered the Trojan Extreme Door Gym, okay? okay. Unbelievable piece of equipment. Um, and you can go and check it out at game. Unbelievable and a good yoga mat with these and the right kind of supplements which are available at game as well. I can yeah. do everything at home. And a yeah. big thing for me is making sure that my kids are seeing that same journey as well. So when my little man sees me training, then he comes and stretches with me. And we've even got little dinky weights that he can do his oh, little nice. thing with. And he absolutely loves it. Brew, and I can get it all, oh, I love all it. at game. Nice. And all you're setting good principles in the home as well, which I think is perfect, perfect, perfect. And this is something also that I want to speak about. It's not just that physical uh, sort of like embodiment that we're trying to achieve, but yeah. also our appearance. I think especially for men, the metro man needs to start looking yeah. after himself a little bit more. And it, it speaks to how you value yourself. True. No, definitely true. And I think for me, especially, I'm always someone that's coming out of the bush or the mountain <laughs> and not really caring too much. So I definitely want to place more emphasis on my self-care, right? So I want to do, do things like just work on hygiene. I want to work on products that can help bring my glow. And I think game has a few choices when it comes to that, believe it or not. I mean, especially when it comes to just getting yourself elevated. 
if that's if that's yeah. what I'm talking about. You know, so they have all that personal care items, which I was so shocked about. I didn't know you could get literally almost anything and everything. What do you think? He, you think he comes out the box looking like this? <laughs> okay, this takes weeks of preparation to get him looking this beautiful. Um, I, I talk about simplifying, and that's been probably my big yeah. kind of goal this year is just simplify the systems in our homes, mm. simplify what we're mm. eating, simplify absolutely everything. And when it comes to our home space, that is a major thing. And when we're looking after ourselves at home, what I love about when you go into your most intimate of spaces, they've got the ultimate in personal care, hygiene, absolutely everything that you need in that starting block yeah. when you kind of greet the world. And that kind of sets your mindset for the rest of the day. But I think, again, what you're saying with regards to organization, it's something I think we could all do with more of, right? And mm -hmm. with game especially, they're stepping up their storage game this year. And I absolutely love it because you can declutter on such an incredible level. They have everything you can do. I mean, they've got things for the kitchen, things for your office and for the bedroom. And there's so many simple storage solutions, right? There's these love plastic it. tubs in all sizes. There's uh, something like drawers that you can use as well. Those are for quick organization. Or even small plastic containers for the kitchen. I mean, it's just about, like, decluttering and when you get into that the zone of working in a better space in a clean environment that also adds to that enthusiasm for Completely. the year. So look good feel good have a good space that also adds to all these abilities to smash our goals this year the only problem with me is i love those boxes so much because you can literally get one for everything <laughs> then everything is in its own box the house looks like a box <laughs> yeah, just one big <laughs> container i absolutely love it but it is clean <laughs> and uncluttered yeah. and that's what we want for this brand new year so stay on track with your new year's resolution with all the tools that you need to stay consistent. consistent. Yeah. Mm, and then I you can start the new year off on the right note with some amazing fitness, some really helpful self-care, and some organizational products from Game. They've got you covered. <laughs> Well, calling all of you right now who feel like celebrating and bringing in the New Year still because it is still happy time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, we've called the gentlemen to assemble at the bar, the espresso bar, if you will, because, uh, of course, this January, Woolies is refreshing your mocktail bar, and it is officially open, and you can enjoy the classics and the refreshing flavors of G&T and a cosmopolitan, a dark and stormy wine and sparkling wine in the Woolies range of non-alcoholic drinks. And here to tell us a bit more about the range is Dumi Mabala, product developer, beverages at Woolies, with Chef Clem, of course, to show us how to make a delicious berry storm spritzer and a tropical cooler as well great to have you here with us to me and happy new year to you happy new year we Thanks are still allowed to say you. that right oh yes it's still january come it's on so come on i was thinking well. with, with your portfolio firstly what a great portfolio to have within the woody's brand you you are basically moreki <laughs> you, you curate the drinks that we enjoy so much, right? And uh, in the world of, of non-alcoholic beverages, I actually, I said to someone the other day, I was at a bar and I asked for a non-alcoholic cocktail. Mm. And they were like, but why didn't you just ask for a mocktail? Mm. Is there a difference? What, what is a mocktail? Mocktail is basically, I mean, if someone, if someone were to say um, a non-alcoholic cocktail, yes. they essentially mean exactly that, a mm -hmm. mocktail. So a mocktail is an al a non-alcoholic beverage mm -hmm. um, that is curated for the adult palate. So it's specifically um, mimicked from the alcoholic version of itself, mm -hmm. which would be a cocktail. So they're fairly common. Right. Um, you can make them off of a wide variety of, of flavors. So starting with your fruity flavors, you can go spicy, you can go herbal notes, mm. and those are usually accompanied with a base that mimics the spirit that would have been in the actual cocktail. Oh, so lovely. we're talking some earthy notes to speak to your vodka type of profile, mm -hmm. um, smoky notes or peaty notes that would speak to your more whiskey profile, uh -huh. but obviously all of this without alcohol and without the negatives of Yes, alcohol. yes, yeah. beautiful uh, kind of range that you have and I was wondering when you and your team were sitting together and conceptualizing what the range would look like what were some of the ideas that were thrown around that landed you at that final presentation mm. so the first thing that you would think of is trends mm -hmm. so you always want to be at the top of mind of your customer in terms of what they would like to be um, consuming in their beverage occasions so you look at trends you look at locally what are people consuming what are people uh, uh, tweeting about what mm. are people showcasing in their moments of celebration 
when you look at globally as well to say what, what are the Europeans um, enjoying at the moment? What, what's happening in the US? And all of these insights or information kind of give you this database that you start screening down as to this particular flavor profile mm -hmm. would actually work in South Africa for the customer as we know her best. So basically, um, for example, there are GNT pomegranate flavored, Pomegranate is a very common and very liked flavor in South Africa. Mm -hmm. so, so it basically made sense to kind of make that um, into a GNT, pairing into the GNT fad and right. gin and tonic occasion. And the dark and stormy as well. Okay, let's, let's put these to work, right? Because, right. Clem, you're going to show us how to put these together in a way that you would be entertaining at home. Now, imagine the kitchen is full of people. Everyone is abuzz with activity. <laughs> what do you do to put these together in a delicious way? So I'm going to work on our tropical mocktail, and you're going to work on, work on our stormy berry mocktail. Okay, all right. right. I, Pretty I'm, delicious. This is going to be a team effort. Yes, it's a team effort. effort. Okay. Okay. So Do I've this. got crushed ice for you, and I like using crushed ice. All the bigger, larger cubes of ice. Make oh, it aesthetic. Massive Make balls. your ice aesthetic as well. Make right. it part of the drink. <laughs> so what I've got for you is blackberries and blueberries. I've got some of the blini, and the blini has been the hero this festive season. It's so delicious. And again, we talk about the fact that five years, ten years ago, when it comes to a mocktail, it's just very sweet. That's the mm. sugar you get. Mm. Flavors in this blini are delicious. So you're gonna work on that. So Kat, what I need for you, you got your champagne flute. I'm gonna give you a spoon. There we, there go. we go. Got some crushed ice. What you're gonna start off with first is our blackberry and blueberry cordial. Okay. Which you've got. And I, I haven't opened all the bottles. As part of making this mocktail, there's always the, the ASMR element of it. That mm. Wait, mm. And then the pop of the bubbles. Cat, look at that, cat's got it, cat's got it. There we go. <laughs> when you're making drinks, part of the experience is like making it and then like a bit of theater with it. Mm. So Kat, you're gonna be on that. I'm gonna start working on my tropical drink. You can add drink. that over there. So, so you said after the ice, we're gonna add the our- cordial? Uh, yeah. Which is over here, mm -hmm. our- ooh. I want you to so smell what? that once you've opened it. It's delicious. So the, the things we're using drinks nowadays are completely changed. It's not just cordials anymore. We're actually using fresh juice, and I'm using a fresh passion fruit juice. That smells beautiful. That uh, smells so stuff. spicy, earthy, and the berries, it's amazing. So I need more ice. you're going to give that, and I'd say um, that's just to line the base of your drink. Mm -hmm. So once you, just like a small little tot of that not goes into your much. champagne flute. I'm going to hit the fresh juice in my glass first. Mm -hmm. Talking about trends, I've also noticed that even for people that do prefer having alcoholic drinks, they've been That's alternating to go from like normal alcohol drink mm -hmm. to a mocktail. Mm. And then back to alcohol oh, drink and then a mocktail. Which is nice. Exactly. It's the balance. It's the balance. Yeah. Can I grab that ice from you? Yes. Hold on. Just the aesthetic that. and the focus is amazing. Look at that. There we go. I need more ice now. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. There All right. Go. So after the ice and the cordial goes in, what are we looking for? You're going to pop your blini. And that's gonna go in next. All right. So what's nice about the blini is it's got all the fizz, all the flavors. You're not missing anything besides obviously alcohol. There you go. It, it's such an enjoying drink. Like I said, it's been featuring a lot this festive season. It is so, so delicious. Can you tell that I'm an experienced bottle popper? You, Cause you're doing it right. Yeah. I was actually saying you should probably do a demo, <laughs> but you always keep your hand on the top of the cork. There we go. You can't get it wrong. No, not on national TV, certainly not. <laughs> there we go. So you gotta, you got to be just composed. Yeah, you know, cause absolutely. The, the drink wants to do a lot, but you, you need to show it who's boss. And then just, hello. There we go. Ah, you didn't what? even hear that. You didn't Did even you hear even that. Know it was happening. Okay, yeah. so you've got the blini. I've got the de-alkalized de Moscato. Correct. Uh -huh. And it's so delicious. Again, just like Moscato, you've got all the flavor nuances in there. I'm gonna just top that up. Oh, Leave lovely. a little bit of space, because I wanna add a little more fizz. How's that? Ooh, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. So I wanna add a little more fizz. Now when you get these always, and we know this from experience, you open slightly, yes. close. And you open again, and you close, and then you open. So, <laughs> there, there we go. Uh, 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 uh. Even if it doesn't look like it's going to, just do it for safety. <laughs> There we oh, go. Are we adding some of this to our Yes, just a little, mocktail it's all well. about layering flavors. Uh -huh. So we've got three layers of flavor, uh -huh. and then final little fizz, and I'm using the ginger and lime because I'm gonna be actually using it as the garnish mm. on my drink. And then Kat, ah, 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 yes. Here you go, sir. The colors are go. also layering quite beautifully. I'm telling it's you, a bit look stormy. at that. Yeah. It's a bit stormy, <laughs> hence the name, a very storm. Okay, cool. So, Kat, what I've done for you is yes. I've taken a couple of blueberries and a blackberry, popped that on a skewer with a little bit of mint. Look at you. 
That is stunning. That's beautiful. I'm not even, that deserves a name on its own. That needs to be called something. We will work on the name. <laughs> oh, unless you have a name right now. No, 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 no I don't. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you just to race this over. You know what, let's take it a step further. Tell me. Pop this in your little bowl that you've got there. Over here? And then dust it with some edible silver. Ooh. Oh, okay? what are you even talking about? Can I make get one in there, for get myself? Get in there. I guess I could, right? Sorry? You try. You can try Oh, yeah, one. for sure. Okay, I'm gonna give you Ooh. a... Here's your cocktail skewer, your toothpick, some yeah. berries, blackberries, Slightly and some mint. Stormy. What I've done is I've brought oh, back the lime, stormy. the lime sunflower. There we go. The lime sunflower goes in oh. with a little wedge of ginger. First, the ginger. Oh, my days. Look at that. That is, oh, that is gorgeous. Is Absolutely. All right. Well, you've had your inspiration. Just look at that. Great ideas. Thank you so much. Thank Jeffrey. you. Do me. me. Thank you Thanks so much. much to you. Yes. AKA Moreki. Thank you, guys. Thank you for blessing Thank us with a beautiful range. And of course, you can catch all of these mocktail recipes on our website, expressoshow.com. Are you going to show us how to open a bottle of bubble? I'm going to open it the wrong way. The wrong way. <laughs> 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 Brilliant stuff. <laughs> Sensodyne repair and protect with deep repair. The science is pretty amazing. It really goes deep and repairs tooth sensitivity. The science is there. It's going to improve their quality of life in a big way. This is the first thing I recommend. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Happy Tuesday to you and thank you so much for joining us as always. It's such a delight to be in your company and I hope that you found the past couple of hours delightful, energetic and inspiring in all ways as you start off the new year. We're about to catch on with the uh, official duties of the morning. Eight o'clock time now for the news. Here we go. Thank you so much. Ke thank you, Kat. 
Oh, thank you so much, Gert. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you quenched this off. Of course, right now it's time to kick off with official duties. And starting off with national news, the Council for Quality Assurance in Education, Uma Lucy, has expressed concern over the increase in irreg irregularities during the matric examination. Now, Uma Lucy announced yesterday that the results of the 2022 final examination for matriculants met all standards. Now, they will be announced later this week, and several cases of cheating were also reported at some exam centers. Now, supervisors will now be investigated in connection with the increase in examination irregularities at these centers. Now, Uma Lucy's chief operating officer Mafu Rakometsi says the various assessment bodies are doing everything possible to eradicate the cheating. Now next up in our national headlines, Langa, the oldest township in the Western Cape, is gearing up to celebrate its centenary this year. Now it was established in 1923 following forced removals from District 6 and later from nearby Ndabeni. Now the township was named after Klosa chief Langala Belela who was imprisoned on Robben Island for two years in 1873 for rebelling against the Natal government. Now, Langa, which is rich in history and heritage, is situated along the N2 highway, some 13 kilometers from Cape Town CBD, and celebrations of its centenary will start in April. Well, from our national news headlines, we head over to international news and reporting from Ghana, where they have been given an extension to the deadline to register for their domestic debt exchange to January the 31st in order to build consensus among stakeholders. Ministers of Finance, Ken Ofari Atta, had this to say yesterday. Now, the crisis hit nation launched a domestic debt exchange at the start of December, days before clinching a staff level agreement with the International Monetary Fund, otherwise known as the IMF. Now, this for a $3 billion rescue package. Now, the IMF has said that its board would approve the deal only if Ghana undergoes comprehensive debt restructuring. I was thinking to our national, uh, international news and moving over to London where the Metropolitan Police armed officer who used his role to put fear into his victims has admitted dozens of rape and sexual offenses against 12 women. Now, David Carrick, aged 48, who met some victims through dating websites, pleaded guilty to 49 offenses across two decades. Now, the Met has apologized after it emerged that that come to the attention of police over nine incidents, including rape allegations between 2000 and 2021. Now, a senior officer said his offenses were, end quote, unprecedented in British policing, unquote. And Carrick admitted to 24 counts of rape. Now, carrying on with our new headlines and uh, something of a more inspiring note, paying it forward is an expression for when the recipient of an act of kindness does something kind for someone else rather than simply accepting the original good deed. Now, precisely that happened last week when ordinary citizens paid it forward to an organization that has supported many, many South Africans in hard times. Now, I'm talking about the gift of the givers, and in Athlone, their offices in Cape Town were burgled. Computer and laptop equipment taken, and all donations destined for needy communities were pilfered. Now, this, however, caused the public to quickly rally to support Gift of the Givers and weed out the thugs. Now, anonymous calls followed and details of where the stolen items were and were stored were shared with the authorities. Now, a quote came through saying that the SAPS was incredible in our time of need and community members were amazing. Within minutes, they divulged accurate information that resulted in the suspects being taken into custody that allegedly broke into our offices, unquote. Now, a spokesperson from Gift of the Givers had that to say, and on course, of course, this is wonderful news and a high five to all involved. For now, though, I leave you with the rest of the headlines. Here's the G-Man with the latest when it comes to traffic. Thank you so much, Raul. In our efforts to get you to work safely, a couple of things you need to be aware of. On the R34 down in KZN, a bus has overturned on the R66 route. That's at uh, Unqualini. So please approach the area with massive caution and give way to emergency vehicles. Please do not block the emergency lane. Then moving to Brooklyn and Pretoria, there's been an accident on the N1 southbound. That's before Linwood Road. The left lane has now been affected. Please drive carefully. Choose another route if you can. Moving down to the Mother City in Montague Gardens in Cape Town. There is major congestion on the N7 northbound at Bosman's Dam. Please add some extra travel time on your journey this morning, but most importantly, get to work safely. Let's get into the weather.
So we start with some weather news and some positive news in light of the crazy weather conditions we've experienced here in South Africa over recent months. Several measures are now being taken in rebuilding massive pipelines, supplying the Etokweni Metro with water to make it more resilient against flooding. This after two of the pipelines from Narkel Dam to the Durban Heights water treatment plant were absolutely smashed by huge boulders or just simply washed away in last year's floods. Extensive damage to infrastructure of both the Etokweni municipality and bulk water supply, the Umgeni water left many parts of the metro without water, as we've reported on. Umgeni water alone sustained damage of some 900 million rand. Incredible. Water and Sanitation Minister Senzong Chunu says repairs to one of the pipelines were finished at the end of last year, and the second pipeline should be in operation by June this year. Meanwhile, a refurbished 340 million litre reservoir at the Durban Heights water treatment plant has also now come into operation to supply water to high-lying areas to the north of Durban, such as Kwamashu, Inanda, Ntuzuma and parts of Phoenix. All great news to report on. Now, one of our favorite parts of the show, in our final weather update, we've got some beautiful pictures. Let's start with Lex von Levitzo, who's out in Plett, beautiful part of the world, still enjoying a holiday, and they shared this bright shot of the full fluffy clouds over the ocean. Then our OG, Happy New Year, Gary Okump, down in East London, showed off this spectacular nature-inspired view overlooking a dam while he walks his dogs. What a way to start the day. Uh, Diane van Hoeven, another regular. Happy New Year to you as well, Diane. Always sharing magnificent views in her neck of the woods. Howick, one of my favorite parts of South Africa. Look at the reflections of that still water. Absolutely majestic. Then last up, well, the OG, OG, Nancy Governor. And of course, uh, she's out on a morning walk, snapped this breathtaking shot from the underberg of the sun blazing through the trees, enjoying the beautiful mother nature. Um, I see she's changed the motive of her walk, but just equally as spectacular. Thank you so much, guys. Keep sharing those sunrise views with us. You can use our WhatsApp line, 63 408 right, brand new day, brand new temperatures, and it's cooking across the country. Let's give you the low down. Polokwane, your low 17 going up to 28, with a 43% chance of thunder showers. Sambombela, 19 and 28 degrees. Your range, Pretoria, 18, your low going up to 31 degrees. Johannesburg, 16 and 30 degrees. Mahi King, 19, your low going up to 34 degrees, stays hot in Klagstorp, 18 and 34 degrees, climbs even higher as we move to Kimberley, 21, your low, 37 degrees, your high, Bloom, no respite there, 15, your low, 35 degrees, your high, the same in Richards Bay, 23 and 35 degrees, your range for the day, Peter Maritzburg ranging between 18 and 35 degrees, Derbs, it's going to be hot and humid, 23, your low, going up to 31 degrees, um, Tata. 20 is your low, going up to 37 degrees. East London ranging between 25 and 30. Craddock, another score to there. 18, your low, going up to 37 degrees. Kabacha, 23, your low, going up to 27 degrees today. George ranging between 19 and 26. In the Mother City, 19 is your low, going up to 29 degrees. Worcester, mm -hmm. uh, 22 is your low, going up to, I think, the hottest temperature in the country, 39 degrees. Sutherland, 18 and 35 degrees, your range, but I'm about to be proven wrong. Why? Because in Uppington, your low is 26 degrees. Your peak, 41. I think the hottest temperature of this season. Please, please, please just stay indoors over those peak hours and hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. But regardless of the weather, make sure it's a beautiful day and let's see if we can help you to that end. Well, while you're staying indoors at this time of the morning, getting ready to go to work or to school, time to enjoy some music right now from our guest artist, uh, Robin Old, who's just recently launched his brand new album called The Ever Loving Wind, and he is about to perform a song from that album called Underground. Take it away. When you run the door, what it is a person comes here for. Some are innocent, although they know. 
Some just got nowhere else to go. Some are corrupt, falling through the sky. Some come with a silky thigh. You should have quit when you had the chance. I would have fallen in your lap now. I gave love to the underground. In another lifetime, maybe I gave love to the underground. You can't take it away. Neither of us willing to mend our ways. We can't agree to disagree. There's more than one way to be free. I would have killed you to just be nice. Stop dispensing with the bad advice. Was no good then, it's no better now. How many years behind a broken plow? I gave love to the underground. Look me in the eye. You can't take it away. I gave love to the underground. In another lifetime, baby, I gave love to the underground. But you can't take it away. Started on this Tuesday morning, beautiful song Thank called you. Underground from the latest album of Robin Old called The Ever Loving Wind. It is available right now. Go and check it out. Let us know what you thought about that performance on our Feel Good Breakfast Show's social media pages, and we'll be right back after this. a champ right now.
It's my feel good birthday show. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us as we delve into the final hour of the show. And today we pay special attention to when human and wildlife collide. That's in reference, obviously, to the seals that have been subject to various forms of abuse by members of the public over the holiday season, following some rather alarming, aggressive moments of behavior. Now, Chief Inspector Jakob Pirasa from the Cape of Good Hope, SPCA, who do amazing work join us about this important discussion. So just to fill in, I don't know all of the details, so maybe Yaku, a good place to start is first of all, Happy New Year to you and your amazing team. You guys really do some incredible work on the ground level where it's needed most. What's been happening? Can you explain to us the situations that have led to this kind of, it almost feels like a bit of a make or break moment here. What has been going on? So with the festive season, we've seen a lot of um holiday goers coming to Cape Town and um, obviously with that we've got a lot of seals on the beaches and unfortunately the bad habit that people have they cannot leave wild animals alone mm. and then they want to take a selfie or want to disturb the animals while they're resting and then unfortunately we've seen um, an attack on Camps Bay Beach where a, a seal attacked um, two beach goers and, and a seal is a terrifying thing to see when it's in that state. But they, we know them as these docile, lovable, wonderful creatures that might be part of the problem that you think they're not wild animals that you should be avoiding. What is primarily driving these, these kind of adverse interactions between wildlife and humans? Is it just a case of our territories have now completely overlapped? What is the spark here that is causing the aggressive behavior? So I think one of the, the main reasons that we face is that people cannot leave the wildlife alone, unfortunately, and they see a seal resting on the beach, which is not abnormal for them to do. Yeah, it's and their place, <laughs> it's their beach. Yeah. Exactly, and then people will approach the seals where they should just leave them, keep their distance, let them rest, and phone those that know how to deal with them. Like the SBCA, we've got a dedicated wildlife department. Um, rather phone the experts instead, don't intervene yourself. And I think that's the biggest problem. People don't know when to stay away. It's easy to understand why there is this overlap. I don't go to the beaches over this time of the year because there are just too many people there. We forget that any beach <coughs> is an engagement with a wild space. The ocean is still wild. What do we need to do to address this? How can we, as beachgoers, as tourists going to an area, into their territory, how do we turn the tide here, do you think? So I, th fun. <laughs> I think we need to respect wild animals and we need to accept that ultimately, yes, they're resting on the beach, but they are wild animals. So stay away, don't approach them, phone the people that know how to deal with them. And I think it can turn very quickly, and especially if kids are involved, just make sure you're always watching, should be the case on any beach, you should be vigilant. And I think it's, it's maybe this notion of them being these sweet, cute, and I know there are instances where they are almost posed for camera shots, don't let that fool you. Um, we're gonna continue to delve a little deeper into why these events could be happening, and most importantly, what we, as beachgoers who get to enjoy these incredible, these beautiful wild spaces, what we can do to improve the situation. And if you've got any questions or any um, advice, some insights to share, please send those to us. You can use our WhatsApp line, 063-408-8863. We've got the expert in the house. If you've got any questions about how you can keep yourself and your beach safe, let us know. Mm. Oh, mm. Yes, indeed. My friend, are you ready to go to Italy? Si, signori. Oh, por favor. Mania, oh, I love it. That's all I know. But <laughs> <laughs> we're going to continue <laughs> and carry on with all of the Italian here's because we are doing something called gnocchi or gnocchi. gnocchi. Some people gnocchi. Around pronounce it. Did you just say gnocchi? I've heard gnocchi. Ay, 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 demone. When I went to my Italian... So apparently it's not, it's not either of those. It's only the one option and that's gnocchi. gnocchi. I like to call it gnocchi, but apparently that's not going to fly into it. But <laughs> Well, now we can have our own little secret. But as I said, it is Italian. It is from Italian origin, as, as many delicious things are. Let me tell you, these little potato dumplings that we are about to make, they soak up every rich sauce that you can think of. <laughs> and it's cooked in something delicious. But it's even better when it's creamy. And that's with Clover's classic dairy snack. Absolutely. You ready for this one? You just made my ear, bro. You <laughs> made my ear. With my gnocchi. Gnocchi. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <laughs> he's dragging your nuts. <laughs> We've got some tomato pesto okay. that we're going to add right. to a bowl. Okay, nice. So you Is get that, that just nice like and straight up again? Yeah, like yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Pre-made. Like We've it. got some uh, chopped up dried tomatoes. Nice. 
And I've got just a few over here just to show you kind of how easy it is to do it. You want to just, you know, rough chop them. Just okay. to give so you these are the sun-dried tomatoes, yes, right? Yes, okay. indeed, indeed. So just kind of give them a little bit of a rough chop to give you that extra texture. Yeah. Uh, gets a bit messy, but you know, get involved with your food. Just make sure your hands are nice and clean. And then once you're done with that, you're gonna pop those into the bowl as well. Okay. And in the meantime, while all of that is happening, your gnocchi <laughs> is, in, is in your pot of boiling okay. water. And uh, it takes about three minutes to get ready, right? Yeah. And you tell that they're ready when they start to float to the surface. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, okay, exactly. Okay, all right. And then once you've got that going on, you're gonna get the gnocchi into your bowl yeah. with the pesto and the sun-dried tomatoes. And then over there, sir, you are yeah. going to chop up. What is this, some pesto, I think, yes? G canesto? <laughs> <laughs> You're a lot, bro. You're a lot. All right, so we're going to chop the this up. Basil that you've nice got over fine. there. You've got some basil, so we're going to chop this up nice and finely. Is this being added to that sauce, or does it come through a little bit later? That's going to come through a little bit later. All right. Some salt and pepper here for seasoning. Okay, okay, and of course, while you are getting to that, I want to talk about something oh so important because I want to get that creaminess involved. I know Please. that step is coming through, but let me chat to you about it in the meantime because Clovis Classic Dairy Snack is, of course, deliciously smooth and it's a creamy dairy snack that pairs perfectly with the taste of sun-dried tomatoes, literally making you feel like you are in Italy. Now, it can be enjoyed on its own as a snack or you can use it in delicious recipes such as this one right here. And Kat is showing us just how easy it is to really bring the infamous or famous, one of the two. I'm not sure with my pairing today, but it's definitely <laughs> one or the other, and it's definitely something that's gonna bring you closer to that Italian fusion flavor. You've been to Italy, haven't you? I have, Very man, last year, end of last year, and I must say, uh, I apparently found out that this is where like tomatoes really found their flavor in pizza. So tomato and basil especially because I think it was down on the Meta coastline of Italy specifically, tomatoes were very, very prominent there. And that's where they uh, were incentivized to produce all these flavors because they had a copious amount of this ingredient, tomato. Ooh, copious! Yeah! Ryle de Mornay coming with the English. I gotta make copious. Right, <laughs> So it was quite cool to actually figure yeah. and find that out for myself. And it's so cool to now see coming all the way back home now to the other side of the continent, or other side of the world yeah. that we still using that same tomato that they've made oh so famous. So it's really cool to see this happening, man. I'm waiting for our gnocchi to do the things. Interesting enough, you were mentioning Italy and pizza, right? right? And you were yes. about like the, the green and the reds. Yes. You know that the margarita pizza yeah. is green, red, and white? Green with the, ah, the leaves, that's the, the red color tomatoes, of the, flag, the white. The, right? that, 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 you're kidding. Wow, you're shit, man's bro. coming through with some nuggets of gold here this morning. I love some it. Some gnocchis of <laughs> Some good nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm, go I'm, I'm going to pretend that uh, our gnocchis have had their time. Oh, you pretend that they've floated to the surface, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. about three Got minutes you. of that. Um, and then we're going to just get those into our bowl. Just make sure that they're nicely drained. You don't want to be taking any excess water into okay, that. Of course, don't make it too watery, but of course at the same time the gnocchi <laughs> is going to <laughs> absorb all the... You know we have people flavor. watching us from Italy, okay, right? They're going right to drag now? you. They're going to drag you. Okay, I apologize. <laughs> Thank you again for having me in your beautiful country and your beautiful uh, land and let me allow uh, to taste all your flavors and I will no longer say gnocchi anymore. <laughs> <laughs> gnocchi. <laughs> gnocchi. Gnocchi. Alright, so any, that's any exactly what's going to be absorbing all that beautiful okay. flavor, right? Yes, yes. indeed. Mm, Especially with the speed, so it's opened up a little bit. Right. So you want to just mix it up a little bit. You see how it takes on the color. Ooh, yes. We've got some beautiful garlic in that pesto. Ooh. Oh, stunning stuff. Oh, this is this is now the aroma of it right there. Can you smell that? Yeah, yeah, smell it. Ooh. Look at that. Oh. Yeah? I can no longer speak normal English again. What is happening? <laughs> Maybe that was a little bit French. Ryan is oh killing me today, bro. You're killing me. <laughs> oh, it's going to have me today. I'm so sorry. Okay. Some of this one too. Yeah. Beautiful oh. stuff indeed. And then we're going to drizzle some of our Clover Classic. Oh, man. Just actually, I was uh, going to dish up the entire. Oh. That's, oh, that looks good. All right. Dish up the Clover Classic. Get the creaminess on. Just Beautiful. Everybody on TV Land's watching now salivating because, oh, it looks so good and it definitely does smell good. I promise you it's going to taste even Lovely better. Stuff. This man's styling it out here. And then, of course, how could you not? You've got to just let that oh, the live its best life. And then just garnish with some right. of that beautiful basil for us. Garnish with some basil over there. Voila. Stunning. Beautiful stuff, mm -hmm. man. Manja. So Enjoy. Do you have a taste? Oh, yes, please. All the way from Italy back to SA into your kitchen. Expressoshow.com if you want this inspiration and, of course, this delicious, beautiful smell and taste.
What is it called again? Mm. Good Ah, uh, uh, <laughs> just hi, hi. <laughs> so we've had classic fashion from Timby, classic cars, thanks, Chad, and we've seen classic hairstyles. And you, Michael? <gasps> classic. A classic range from Clover, timeless taste. Made with love by Clover. Oh, you can make my day. It's my feel good Welcome back as we continue to build on our wildlife knowledge this morning with uh, wild animal run-ins, unfortunately of the negative kind, stealing a lot of headlines. And we are obviously talking about seals that have lately been subjected to various forms of abuse by members of the public. And this has resulted in some scenes that have gone viral and we'll touch on one of those in a moment. And of course, we are joined by Chief Inspector Jaco Peterson from the Cape of Good Hope, SBCA, and Marine Biologist and good mate of the show, Mark Fitzgibbon, to talk all about the behavioral changes that have been noted in the seals. So welcome back and welcome to you. Good to have you here. But let's first set the scene. A lot of people have been asking about these incidents. So let's hone in on one. It is a little bit intense, so please be warned. But this is what went down on one of our beaches. Take a look. <laughs> speak from a parent's perspective absolutely terrifying but in this case it's actually a seal in the water not just a seal that is sitting lonely on a beach you can see how congested that space is just looking at this you can understand why there would be conflict there's a lot of people there's a crazy energy a seal arriving in this sort of space is not going to feel safe I'm not a behaviorist <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination but this does seem like a recipe for disaster and uh, that's absolutely terrifying, I think, for the people involved, especially with little children involved. So you can understand the knee-jerk reaction. Parents especially, I think, would be terrified. But anyone wants to feel safe when they're, they're at a beach. And right now, neither the animals nor the beachgoers are feeling particularly safe at the moment. Mark, great to have you back with us. Happy New Year to you Thank as you. well, my friend. Um, I, I just want to hone in on one voice note quickly and see if you guys can uh, tap into this. Darren weighed in with this particular voice note. Let's hear what he had to say. Morning, Express Show, Morning Show. I, morning. My name's Darren Valentino Parker, and I just wanted to ask, um, what do you do when you see a 
a seal just laying on the beach? Do you call the authorities? Do you call like, I don't know, the lifeguards? Or do you just leave it? Okay, well, um, various ways of approaching this. Let's start with the procedure, Yaku. In terms of a seal being there, if it's on a beach where you don't anticipate it, what, what should you ideally do? So the safest thing is to stay clear of the seal, keep your distance, and rather phone the SPCA Wildlife Department. We will send our inspectors to go and have a look. It doesn't mean because a seal is on the beach that there's something necessarily wrong with the seal. Mm. So it can be dangerous. Seals can give a nasty bite that can... Um, have serious repercussions yeah, for people. Yeah, septicemia. Correct. So their, their teeth are infected or in, with, with bacteria. So best is stay clear and let the experts come and deal with it. Completely. Um, why, 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 Mark? <laughs> why, why, why? I can understand if a seal is being harassed out of its comfy spot while it's presumably sunbathing, yes. just chilling, that's yes. what they look like they're doing and living their best lives. If they are constantly being shooed by a particular species, they're going to start to view that species differently. But fight or flight why is flight becoming fight so in the beginning of last year and the end of i would say 2021 there was a massive red tide event mm. kind of like an algal bloom and that affected a lot of the seals environment a lot of its prey items the things that they eat were actually poisoned by a chemical called demoic acid and seals will eat these items getting poisoned themselves now Usually, I'm sure you know when there's a red tide, people always tell you, stay away from shellfish. Uh, and seals eat a lot of easy. shellfish, so they got kind of poisoned by this acid. Usually what happens in humans is we vomit and we have a really bad, and you know, reaction, reaction but the seals don't have that reaction, so they'll just keep on eating. A lot of them actually died off, but some of them survived. And what this chemical does, it affects their, their brains and their hearts. It causes a lot of swelling around there. So what we've seen in studies from New Zealand and California is that that fight, flight, or freeze response just turns into fight. So this is kind of a long-term thing after a few months after these events. That seal, um, I don't think, we didn't watch the whole video, but yeah. that seal had so many opportunities to actually escape, yeah. but it chose, no, I'm going to defend myself now. And also after- like brandy for seals. We've been giving the seals brandy, and now yeah. they, they want to do it. Oh yes, definitely, uh, quite the strong brandy but, at that too. Yeah, but this is terrifying. So is this something that is gonna happen every time we have a red tide? Is this something that's gonna continue within the, the seals in our area, or will it likely move into another phase now? How, how concerned should we be about this behavior? So we don't actually know that yet, but there, is, there are a lot of, science going on on this particular topic. I know uh, Sea Search is doing some projects, um, but what we've seen in other countries is that it can actually, um, you know, be very long term, a couple of months, wow. even years after a red tide event. And with red tides becoming more, um, you know, yeah, there's a lot more yeah, of them frequency. happening with global change and all of these things, um, it could become a normal thing but also just with seals in general um, if you do see a seal you know charging at you um, rather just steer clear of that seal and Run. call the SPCA <laughs> or anyone else yeah absolutely I don't think you could have said it better yourself call the pros I'm gonna say thank you so much for being what you guys are the amount of times I've come to your organization with a little bird that needs to be healed you've never turned me or my boy away thank you for being that and thank you for fighting this battle which has two directions. It's educational, but it's also let's get practical and be careful on the beaches. Phone the experts if you need to. At no point should you be approaching, taking selfies with, chasing or engaging with any wild animal. They are wild. And when wildlife is thriving, we all thrive. It's our natural resource. We've got to look after it. Yeah, it is indeed a great conversation, but we're going to make things even better and even greater right now because we're back on the Expresso stage with Robin Aldo standing by with his next song. And this is one that takes him back home. This is his birthplace, of course. The song's called Zambia. Enjoy. <laughs> Put me 
soul in my memory it kept me safe on the river bank now I wouldn't know who to thank Zambia oh Zambia silver river gently flow through the places we used to know down to where like rain Can you put me together Casinos and all the rest Going over what we love the best Up the river and around the bend We'll find a place for us all to mend Zambia Oh, Zambia Silver River gently flows go down to where the rainbow feels like rain Zambia oh Zambia Silver River gently flow through the places we used to know down to where the rainbow feels like rain together can you put us together can you put me together Robert, man, you. honestly, the only way I can describe that is just, you make it feel lekker. <laughs> this is good music, it gives us such a vibe, and don't go anywhere, Mzanzi, because we've got one more performance coming from Robin in just a bit, and we'll see you there. Nice, man. <laughs>
It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to the Expresso Show. Yo! In all its finery, absolutely beautiful. We love it and we love having you here. So let's hone in on one of the big ones already this year. The countdown to the night that will forever change a pageant holder's life over has happened this past Saturday. Masses around the globe gathered to enjoy the 2023 Miss Universe pageant live from New Orleans in the US of A. And mm. what a night it was. Yeah, the delegates introduced themselves after a sparkling entrance in which they simulated a Mardi Gras parade while a local band performed buzzing and vibrant jazz tunes. Eh? Yeah, it was so awesome. Our very own Jen Sue was there to enjoy the pump and it's uh, so awesome that we even brought you something to take a look at Ooh, right nice. now. Check this out. <laughs> Africa Ndavi no Keri. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Jen. I'm so excited to be here. I can't believe it's happening. Happening. This is so exciting for <laughs> Miss Universe. Oh my goodness, what is your message for all your fans in South Africa and all over the world? To all my South African fans and supporters, I love you so much. Thank you for always supporting me, for always having my back and always making sure that I feel my best before I step out on stage. <laughs> Yay, South Africa, here we go. Uh, yeah, I feel like we should just what, give it a yeah, little... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. What a oh, moment. Yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> Life-changing moment right there, eh? You can I, see. I mean, she didn't even believe it, honestly. <laughs> no, well, I, you know, I think that there has Come been on, a man. moment now that is forever cemented where they're like, are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's right. Uh, but take nothing away. Absolutely gorgeous. And I think shining amidst a field that was that strong, she can yeah. be proud because it was a very strong international field. Yeah. Sure. Arbany Gabriel, your new Miss mm. Universe. And of course, our own Miss South African, Davi Nokere, that you just see yeah. there with Jen Su, Beautiful. Uh, from Gabaza in Limpopo, represented South Africa against contestants from 84 other countries in the competition. And she was one of the front runners throughout the build up to the finale, making her parents and, of course, the entire nation so, so proud. We love you, our queen. Thank you so much for flying the flag so high. Oh, yeah, it was. Uh, well, yeah, literally, Lit like, <laughs> literally flying the flag. <laughs> Could have done it. She looked absolutely <laughs> exquisite. But over 80 candidates representing their countries competed for this coveted Miss Universe crown, and obviously only one can come out. Ryle, oh, do oh, the honors, yes. man. It's Arbany <laughs> Gabriel. <laughs> Good night, bro. Good night, one, Ryle. Of course, she walked away with the crown in honor of being the guardian of this prestigious title and what a title it is. I'm so excited. I need to go cook. I need to <laughs> oh, my God. I can't handle it. What? Go do your I'll thing. I'll catch up with you now, man. Oh. Yeah, well, congratulations yeah. to the winner. Yeah, mm. I, I mean, her life has just changed at the drop of a Literally, coin. And I'm hoping right. that that change also <laughs> commences for many others that she impacts in a reign because essentially that's the position she has, a, yeah, yeah. a position of change, of influence, and one that can hopefully lead many of us into a better and a lighter future. Let's yeah, that. yeah, and yeah. all of these ladies, of course, have responsibilities in their own countries as the reigning miss of their country yes. as well. And, uh, of course, the runners up, and, of course, our very own South Miss South Africa, Ndavi Nokeri, congratulations to you for mm. representing Mzanti in the finest way possible on the biggest global stage this year. And we wish you all of the best in yeah. your year of reign. proud. <laughs> Ah, oh, thank you so much, gents. We are back in the kitchen to cook something that won't break the budget. In fact, this could be one of the least expensive meals you'll make, and it is exquisite. And it really does reinforce the notion that the right ingredients, the right quality ingredients can create something special. You don't need too much. And of course, we are working around our beautiful African gold extra virgin olive oil, which is exquisite. I'm going to need a partner in crime for this one. But what I love about this exquisite product that every blissful batch is pressed with love and cured to perfection. And this recipe is nothing short of bliss in itself. Our spicy black garlic pasta, an exploration of flavors that make for the perfect low-budget weeknight dinner, as I said, ready in under 20 minutes, if you do it right. So, Raul, you're going to be taking care of the important parts, young yeah, friend. Yeah, um, Really, really simple. So, we've got the black garlic, which, as I understand it, is, it's been cured. Mm. So, it's an aged, cured garlic, so you can imagine how that flavor develops. Oh, yeah. Takes away some of that, like, overpowering punch of garlic. You can smell it like that. Kind of got a weird roastiness mm. to it. I, I, have that the, uh, I have a feeling that, I have a feeling that the flavors have been able to develop to a point that's just going to work. Okay. Um, then we've obviously got our fish and salt and pepper. So what yeah. you've got there in the pan, you're going to put uh, the black garlic, the fish, okay. and the um, so anchovies is the fish that I'm Anchovy, using, okay. obviously, cool. which has obviously got its nice, beautiful... And straight um, on the pan or any oil for Straight on the pan, yeah. and you're going to actually use the water to create a bit of a sauce in the moment. Right, okay. And add a bit of a water 
through Ooh. that. Flavors already just immediately emerging out of this. And you can put the whole, the whole that's a half a cup of water. All right. You can possibly Play turn more. the heat down a little bit. <laughs> and you'll see immediately the fish and the garlic start to break down. And the idea here is to, oh, smell that garlic, Ooh. buddy. Get a smell of that camera. Yeah, get come a smell on. of that. I'm so get it into your... <laughs> Every TV should have wow. a little funnel that can just push out the. Oh, honestly, the smell. Man, this is giving me freshness. It's giving me the surrealness of the garlic, but at the same time, somewhat of like a tropical feel. I think mm. that's that island vibe coming from obviously the anchovesia that, you, that you've added, man. Exquisite. So you've got awesome. the salty, you've got the yeah. strong flavors of the garlic, and almost just mash that down and break those okay. down. Obviously, after a little bit of time, you're going to break down the, the fibers and it's going to become more and more yeah. saucy. And that flavor is going to permeate through the sauce, have through you, the water. Have and you then you're going to add garlic before, though? I've never. It's quite interesting it because it was quite awesome. hard when I first started, and now it's tending Literally, to Literally, the taste up. is coming out. Yeah, I and it's almost you. like it's releasing that flavor into this. Sorry to interrupt you, G, but that no, was just but that's exactly spectacular. It. And imagine when you're roasting garlic, that's exactly what happens. The flavors develop, it takes away yeah. some of that intensity, and just you get a nuttiness looking exquisite. Dude, now you're going to add your spaghetti. You you could probably cook them down a little bit longer, but you, I, I suppose you want the spaghetti, which has been cooked, to kind of cook a little bit longer in that flavor to get the sauce. And again, drunk. just like the gnocchi <laughs> of early. <laughs> it one. also absorbs <laughs> all that flavor. So gnocchi obviously absorbing all that flavor. Again, I can imagine the spaghetti here to do exactly the same thing, right? Completely. And then, of course, you're going to add our African gold, which is absolutely Ooh. exquisite. And you don't want to cook an olive oil too long. It doesn't have the highest smoking points. And something Smart. that is this exquisitely created you don't want to break it down. You want to get all the anti-inflammatory properties that an olive oil has. But with this, it's the flavor, mm. flavor, flavor. African gold, extra virgin olive oil, perfectly balanced, medium intensity, extra virgin olive oil with a fresh green aromatic fruitiness and a distinct pepperiness that really does underpin it. It's beautiful, perfect for finishing over meats, for veg, for pastas, for bread, for salads especially. African gold is African excellence at its finest. And best part, it is locally produced. And it's not only pleasing to the palate, but to the soul as well. And you can mix yeah, in our really pre-cooked mushrooms as well. And there you have it, my friends. I would add a few more lashings of the African gold just because it's beautiful and we absolutely adore yeah. that It's something you can profile. literally drizzle on top of almost anything yeah. and it really does bring it to life. And it's like that cherry on the top, that golden moment of any dish. Oh, completely, Call it that. man. And these, these oils have been cured to create a flavor profile that is unmatched. Phew. And then, of course, you get the health benefits as well. Oh, then yeah. that baby is going to come out into our plates. And right, we are going to simply add hands pretty hot, so let me some nice crunchy croutons. Cool the hands down. There we go. Oh, looks good. Get some of that in there, man. Oh. Yum. Spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> you got yeah, enough? Some of it we got into the plate. We finished it off with a little bit of uh, freshly chopped parsley for a little bit of fresh pop and some croutons and you're on your way. If you want to find this recipe, you can go to expressoshow.com and if uh, a budget buster is what you need, this is going to seal the deal. Nicely mm. done. It's
Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on SABC3. Hope you've enjoyed this Tuesday morning with us as we're about to enjoy one last performance from Robin Old. We've had a taste of his latest music and right now he's about to bring a bit of nostalgia into it with an old song that he says is a goodie, one that could cheer you up, bring some energy into the space. It's called Charlie Go Crazy. Here's to all those glorious, sweet, and savory once a year recipes and family memories that makes the season so festive. Made with love by Clover. Another feel good production.